Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 128 of the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. We are brought to you by Black Belt Digital Marketing. Anything you need to build your business on or offline, it's website design, Google ads, social media, printing, literally anything. We're a one-stop shop. You can check us out at Black Belt Digital Marketing on Instagram or our website, bbdigitalmarketing.com. And right there on the homepage, if you're looking for local business, you can request a free review of your online business or online presence today. My name is Milton Campus. I'm a brown belt training out of South Florida. We got uh, Bo behind the camera on this end. Yep. We've got Ben. T- uh, ben today. <laughs> Christian's out. We got Ben today. Say hello. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we let Christian. We let Christian talk once in a while. Oh, nice. Okay. Right? <laughs> uh, don't forget to like, comment, download, share, and click on the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate all your support. Joining us today is a UFC, Bellator, and Invicta veteran. We have got black belt Heather Joe Clark. Yes. Give me a second. We're going to do a couple of sponsor reads, and then we'll uh, we'll bring you in. Uh, thank you to our friends over at Flow and Roll. Hands down, the best custom gi and nogi gear in the business. Don't believe us. Visit them on Instagram at flow underscore and underscore roll. Check out all their custom designs. They work with academies across the country. Some really cool stuff there on IG. Uh, you can use coupon code JJD uh, for 20% off of all of their gear at flowandroll.com. But reach out to them on Instagram and talk to them about their pre-order program. They have a really good way to help gyms get all their gear. Very little money out of pocket. It's a, it's a very cool system. I'll let him explain it to you, though. Uh, we got Leo Optics. Let me see if I do this today. Woohoo! Leo Optics, right? These are my favorite sunglasses right now. Uh, these are bamboo sunglasses. They're a, uh, an, a sunglass and apparel company uh, specializing in bamboo sunglasses. Their passion is rooted in jiu-jitsu and the lifestyle surrounding jiu-jitsu, founded in Southern California with uh, just products reflecting the BJJ lifestyle. So you can go to layoutoptics.com and you'll get 10% off with code JJD. So these are my uh, these are my go-tos. Also, thank you to BioPro Technology. All right, this is, um, I'm taking these, I take, there's two boxes here. I don't know if we can see both of them, right? We've got one with the quarter sleep on the bottom. We've got the regular box. I take these daily on an empty stomach. Again, morning when I wake up and then right before I go to bed. Helps with anti-aging, metabolism, libido, immune system, skin, cognition. Uh, and then the nighttime definitely helps with sleep and, sleep and stress. Uh, that does have melatonin in it, so I stopped taking any other melatonin products. All this with no needles or side effects. You can check them out at bioproteintech.com and get $30 off with code JJD on any of their regularly priced kits, okay? So check them out. All right, wasn't too bad? No, Good? not too bad. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I The one thing I didn't mention was 10th Planet Boca Raton, which is... Uh, I was 10th plan. I, we had uh, Charlie Vinch on, I guess, who you met. I, did he come train with you or did you know him before yes, that? Yes. No, no. He hit me up, uh, you know, saying he was opening up a gym nearby okay. and just wanted to kind of collaborate a little bit. Sure, yeah. sure. He mentioned you and I'm like, a 10th planet in Boca? What's mm-hmm. going on? Now, you, do you still, are you still involved or own 10th planet Denver? Is it, or is it Denver? Or I, I started 10th Planet Denver with my partner, Connor Hewn. And then um, when I came out here, I basically, you know, walked away from that. Okay. So I have no I have no hand in the pot, so to speak. Okay. But uh, Connor and I are still very close and okay. um, speak pretty much daily on just like the collaborating of keeping a lot of our same designs sure. um, and merchandise because I designed all the merch in Denver. Okay. So it's kind of like, I love that stuff. I yeah. designed it. But... Um, so bringing that over as well as like curriculum and just, you know, I'm a 10th planet black belt under him. And so, okay. yeah, I just want to keep that kind of same style and everything going. Um, yeah. So very similar. So we're gonna, definitely we're going to go through the history of how you found jujitsu and your MMA career and stuff like that. But I am still curious about um, did you start? Your jujitsu training at a 10th planet or you found 10th planet later, right? I found it later, but not that. I mean, I started training solely 10th planet in uh 2018 okay. i guess it was like solely just 10th planet but um i knew eddie from the the, the beginning uh really? i trained at a gym called peace and eating training center in downtown la that's where i started training mma sure so i started training jujitsu but jujitsu for mma okay and then shortly after that you know someone told me about 10th planet told me about eddie and i went and trained with him and i remember like yeah. the first time i rolled with him he literally i think tapped me I don't know, 15 times. And yeah. every time he would just be like, oh, like, are you okay? <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, <laughs> Super yeah, nice. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. But, and you would just do it again, you yeah. know? Um, but so I had always trained there. I'm from Los Angeles. So anytime I moved away, I moved to um, Albuquerque next to train at Jackson mm-hmm. Wings, but I would come home to visit and I would just train with Eddie. So 
you know, I didn't, I wasn't solely training with him, but I've been around the system. I've been around the people. I've been around him. And then who are now black belts today as yeah. well, like growing up with uh, some of the girls who are now female black belts. Um, so that's kind of cool that at least I have that history with them and yeah. a, a little bit and, and um, can go back to those days. Yeah. So that you, you mentioned curriculum before. Does it come from the top down or do you get to kind of develop your version of the curriculum? It's it, it's everyone has their own, you know, say in what how they want to run their okay. gym. Right. But there is the the 10 planet warm ups is is a curriculum that Eddie basically put together. Right. So mm -hmm. it's 32 flows, A through H, one through four. And yes, uh, <laughs> sounds like way more than the 15 minutes at my school. That, the yeah, warm up yeah. That we well, do. <laughs> so it, it, basically the warm up. So say a one or whatever. Okay. Well, a one's a bad example because they're Grambies. Um, say a two would be like the se a series of flows, a series of one flow with a partner. Mm -hmm. And the way that we I teach it is I do the whole class like that flow. So I'll write it down on the board because I don't actually have them written on on any. Board. But he's got it like up on. Yeah, he's got it in. Um, on the wall, right? Yep. And then in Denver, I. I wrote out all the boards so they're hanging up so I didn't have I don't have to write them up every day um, but I do like to have them there for the students sure. to see when we're doing them because the language that Eddie came up with is so different than your typical you know BJJ language I mean yes we have Kimura we have armbar we have you know the same ones that you guys have yeah. I say you guys uh, the Gracie style <laughs> but we have a lot more and so by learning the warm-ups you're learning his language. You're learning how he kind of flows things together. And um, it's just like the core curriculum of 10th Planet. And he's constantly changing it. That's what's super really? cool. Yeah. So the okay. warm up wall in headquarters is like old. He calls it just like a piece of art at this point. Okay. But now um, there's updated ones. And I have a PDF of that. And I actually just made a rash guard with all the flows wow, on okay. it. And it's That's the cool. updated flows. And I made it look to look like Eddie's wall. So it's like got the same mm. colors that his headquarters wall has, but with the updated flows. So it's kind of cool. So when you say his, the language, the way I understand it is it's not just like the name of the move, but isn't, aren't like kind of the positions that you might yes. be in are, yes. are named as well. Yeah. So you could get a position could be a name. It could be like a sweep could have a name. Um, it could be, you know, uh, the full transition for like, for instance, dope mount is one of the positions that in MMA, it was a specific position. Whereas in, in, um, in 10th planet, it's actually a transition to the mount. Okay. You know, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of names and it's so funny. The last fight, my last UFC fight in Mexico city was against Alexa Grasso and it was quite the fight. I like broke my orbital, couldn't see, broke my nose, could have bleeding all over. And here I am after the fight, sitting in the lobby of the hotel, sitting with Eddie. And he Did he corner there. you or he was he just there? He didn't corner me. Okay, he, he was, was there for there. Tony Ferguson. Okay. And so I'm sitting there talking to him, eating chocolate cake, bleeding down my face because <laughs> whatever. Because that's what you do yeah. after a fight. <laughs> but I'm like, not where, like, and I'm like, I'm picking his brain because I just always found him super intriguing. Even oh, though yeah. he's been a friend of mine for years, every time I was with him, I was just like, always asking him things about 10th planet, not even knowing that this is where I'd be now. Right. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, I finally want to ask you this question. This is a great time. So how do you pick these names? Like, where do these names come from? You know, they're like yeah. the most random names or I, I, I imagine this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to call that this thing. Right. That's I think that's what the whole rest of us out here. Yeah, imagine. Similarly, <laughs> but it, it usually happens on the mat. I think is what he was saying. It's like, you just got to come up with a name and sometimes yeah. it's very clear. So like we have one called the douchebag and it's like, <laughs> You know, it's kind of douchey uh, way to break spider web, um, you know, and that makes sense. But, you know, and then we have like rubber guard positions, New York, and then we have New Jersey. New Jersey is like the cousin of New York. So like it's a very <laughs> okay. similar position. Um, and then he's like, and then there's other times where it's just like someone's got to name it and yeah. you just got to name it to name. It doesn't have any rhyme or reason, but we got to come up with a name. Is it? I know like uh, I watched I, I there was there's a there's a video out on YouTube or there's like a series. I think it might have been Flow Grappling did it. On Eddie recently, or maybe yes, even a couple it was years ago, B -Mac. and and oh yeah, and then um, it, I hear this orchard, like right there's yes. the orchard, right there's mm -hmm. somebody named Orchard, right? Nate or, Orchard, Nate yeah. Orchard, that's his so, real name, yeah, and then orchard he then he is, got Dead yes. Orchard, right? Mm -hmm. So like things like that happen, yeah. I get like he, yes. he did it or did he name it? 
Was it like his move, his signature move? That's a good you question. Yeah. I, I don't know if Eddie named that one or if, if Nate did, but yeah. it's a killer move. That's for sure. Yeah, so what, what's I make my own uh, names now too. So like, ah, that's where I was gonna go. Yeah, like my coach does that. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah. we, you know, and I don't know. Sometimes, like, I don't know if it's actually in the system or not, or maybe like I just never heard of it or whatever. But I'm not like, and and a lot of times I will. I'll ask Connor or I'll ask other you know people in the system. Um. Hey, what's the name of this? And if they don't know, then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna name it. Okay. So I have a recent one that I named a friend of mine in San Diego is a purple belt um, named Darren. He showed me this armbar that he got from Danaher. I was like, D names, right? And it's from Side Control. So we call it the Side D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm yelling at my students, you know, Side, get that Side D, get that Side D. <laughs> You know, and like to me, it's like my Kids, students turn, this, are, turn the podcast <laughs> off right now. Just go tell your parents to the side door, right? The side door is what I'm trying to say, kids. Side door, get that side door. No, so you know, it's just it, gotcha. it's funny. It's a way to remember it. It's a way to like make it fun. Yeah, and um, yeah, and it's also like if I'm saying that and you're on my side control, right? And and someone's yelling, hit that side D. You're gonna be like. For yeah. a second, you're gonna be like, "What the did, did they just say? What I think they say?" And then I got you an arm bar, and you're tapping. But it's it's such an easier way to remember things. And my my coach, when especially doing the podcast, somebody will meant say a move, and I have no clue what they're talking about. Whether it's Tent Planet or any or anybody, they say something, and I definitely don't know the technical names. But what happened is we have a a, a big kids program in, in Coral Springs, mm. so he uses like these funny names to get the kids to remember sure. stuff. But then we have so many of the parents that train with us that he just uses the same name. Sure. So we've got like happy baby. Yeah. Nene, the reverse Nene, <laughs> you know, so like, you know, that dance Nene. So like you're putting your hands kind of in that yeah. position. So we named it the Nene. So like uh, we've got the Whopper. We've got the double Whopper. Mm -hmm. You would, they have, and there's no it's rhyme great. or reason to these sometimes. Like why the Whopper? Why this? Why that? And I, I know those names, but when I'm having a conversation with somebody who might know like the dad or her names or like uh, Ashi this and, you know, and I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. It sounds like sure. I've never done a day of jujitsu, but if I tell them my names, obviously it's the same. Like, so there's, there's a, no rhyme or reason to yeah. it in our, you but know. But it's good. It's code, you know? Yeah, code. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you're coaching from the side, it's, it's more important that, that you know what. I've given Maybe, up on know. trying to like find the right, the correct name when sure. he teaches us something. So like actually like the, the whopper for us is that move that uh, I think Gordon kind of just made it famous where he's mounting and then he's got your arms basically mm -hmm. across it and he's going to do it's a like head a and smother, arm choke. Yeah. yeah, smother with the chest. We call, we call that, that the whopper. One in one, one arm's across. Whopper, and then this is oh, our double whopper. Oh, and then he's whopper. got the other. Oh, the, the, okay. the double We whopper. call that the great popper. The great. The first one. Yeah. Just when you, when you like slide their arm across and then. Yeah. Yeah. They call that the grape popper. The grape popper. Yeah. What, what about when both arms are I don't are know. In? We, like, we have one. We, right. we don't, you, know, right. it, you know, 10 <laughs> planet, we, we don't need both. We just get them with the one. Yeah. <laughs> so, let, so let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. You know, tell us how you found martial arts and, and how you got involved with this craziness. Ooh, and, man. You know. Well, um, I, my dad is a, a Vietnam vet. So he okay. like kind of just raised me being super tough, you know, wanting to stick up for myself and, and teach me how to fight very early. So had me in karate when I was eight. Um, and then as I kind of got in high school, I I just, I don't know, I, I tend to get into fights, you know? <laughs> Girl, not, not me like picking, obviously picking on people yeah. or bullying people, but kind of getting bullied yeah. and, and, not, um, and not being okay with that. And my dad always saying like, hey, okay, this is like, this is what you're gonna do, you know? When, yeah. when the girl, next time she says something to you uh, or so pushes you, right? You're gonna drop your 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 bag off your shoulder and backhand her in the face, yeah. front kick, one two, you know, and like he'd make me practice it. Did he know how to fight? Did he have, yeah. like have a fighting background? Yeah. As well, so or? he, you know, obviously as a as a marine in in Vietnam, you kind of had yeah. to learn yeah. to to do everything. It sure. wasn't it's a much different war back then, right? It wasn't just uh, shooting from far, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so a lot of hand to hand combat there. And then he went in, did um, karate Shotokan in college after that. Uh, and then okay. he actually was a honorary black belt under Benny the Jet, your okay. who is um, a, a multiple champion in kickboxing, boxing, and he used to train MMA and fight okay. MMA on the Elvis Presley team so this is <laughs> Wait, like a long time ago. That's 60s, right? That's yes, yes, yes. Mid 60s. So, like no holds barred type yeah. shit. So my dad had a black belt under him and just like he know he knows, you know, yeah. how to fight. So yeah. 
he would teach me, um, I don't know, I guess it was very karate style, but also just like whatever's going to work, you know? Yeah. As, uh, as a kid in that moment, like I could, like I have two girls, I have a stepdaughter and I have my, my biological daughter. I could imagine me having these conversations and then being like, but dad, what, I, can, I can't hit her. I can't hit her. Like, no. or, or oh, scared to the, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would imagine, like, I mean, my, my oldest daughter's 30, but at that time, like telling her to like, okay, you're going to hit her with the back. Like, they'd be like, are you crazy, dad? Oh, I don't want to fight. I was like, let's you were, go. You were in? Yeah, you were in? No, okay. I was, in. <laughs> I was totally, I mean, I, maybe because, <laughs> one, I think because, it's funny you said that, I've never really thought about it. Like, I wouldn't. Like, I think a, a lot of kids, period, a boy and girl, I think would be like, you want me to do what? You know, but like. But, but is there, you know? that's the thing, is there's either, you're either that way it's or the you're fight the or other flight. way. Yeah, yeah, like he taught you fight, not the flight. And right? I was so. just born that way. My yeah. sister, I have an older sister, too, five years older, and she always used to fight with me. She was a yeah. little crazy, and and um, sh she would just, yeah, we would fight a lot as a kid, yeah. as kids. So I think I learned that too, like standing up for myself as a very at, yeah. at a very young age. And my dad just teaching me like be be tough. I don't know. I just yeah. had it in me. I think I just if, for, for my girls, I would always just be like, if it's a, like I never really had to like I never had a situation where they were like fighting sure. other girls. So it was like if a boy touches you, just kick him in the you know. Sure. Kick, but you know that's a classic, right? Click kick him there and and run or you know tell a teacher. So I think that was like the extent of any advice that I maybe even might have given. I don't right, even know. Right. I don't remember. I mean, I I remember. Uh, yeah, like it, in, in elementary school, I got in a fight with a boy. And he like went to punch me, and I did the full on like karate block yeah. like this. Ugh, yeah, right. yeah, like this. <laughs> but then I accidentally hit him in the face with the <laughs> with the block, and like hard enough to where make it made him cry. He went and told like the principal, and then my dad had to come in, and then the mom had to come in, and it was this whole thing. And she like they hit him, and I said no, like I just blocked. Actually, I might have blocked and returned fire. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. But either way, yeah. but like yeah. I think I hit him, and then I hit him. Yeah, either way, he hit me first. And it, like my dad will never like, you know, tells that story forever yeah. because it's just like, I just, I think it was just in me. I don't yeah. know. I like, I liked that stuff. Yeah. I like, and then I started playing hockey in, um, in high school and I played with women the first year. So there was no full contact. It was like pushing and stuff. Right. Yeah. But no, like full on like that till, till 10th grade, I started playing with boys in LA. Okay. Only girl on the team, full contact. Wow. So I'm playing guys, literally guys your size, like 18. Cause, uh, this small? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I was like tiny, you know, I was like 115 pounds, sopping wet, like yeah. little, you know, 15 years old f playing with 15 to 18 year old guys. And some yeah. of the 18 year old guys were big, big boys, football yeah. player, stocky guys, and they didn't care. They wanted to, to mess me up. So I think like learning to be tough in on the ice also helped. Sure. Once I got in jujitsu and, and fighting and stuff like that after. Okay. So did you want, did you do any training like besides your father teaching stuff? Did you wind up doing like any karate or any? So, martial arts? so in high school, I also, my dad, Benny, the jet, go back to Benny, the jet. He had a, a gym in, um, in Van Nuys that I would go to sometimes in high school. Sure. And then right out of college, um, or when I was do, playing division one hockey in, in Minnesota, I, I don't know, like I just felt like, oh, I wanna go find a boxing gym. So I went and found a boxing gym and I started training boxing. Had an amateur fight and I really liked it, but man, it was like three round, three one minute rounds. And I remember the next day waking up and like, oh my God, like my neck was, I never felt that before, you know? Yeah. And like kind of second guessing, like, is this something I wanna do, you know? <laughs> and I kept doing, kept doing, ended up moving back to LA, um, transferring schools and just not being able to afford to train and, and like mm -hmm. kind of gave it up for a while, finished school, continued to play hockey, played, um, I played professional in Canada for a year and then mm. Switzerland for a year wow. professionally. And then I came back, finished my degree. And then I moved to Maui and I was doing a surf school out there and doing photography. And like, yeah. I kind of just put uh, sports on the back burner um, until I came back from Maui and got overweight. So I'd been back from Maui for like a year and I was just eating everything I couldn't get on on the island, <laughs> you know, everything I could. Couldn't I can get. imagine. Let me try uh, this. Yeah, let me yeah, try yeah. This. I was just like, all this, oh, this stuff. Okay, so um, and and I found this cupcake store in Beverly Hills that was right <laughs> by my house. That was a bad sign. So I got I got like heavier than I'd ever been. So I was I was swimming actually one day at Gold's Gym in downtown LA. And I got in the hot tub and I see this guy in Muay Thai shorts and I was like, oh, cool. Like I'm looking for a kickboxing gym. Like, 
do you do you train? He's like, oh, I'm a coach, actually, right down the street. Um, this is the owner. It's an MMA gym. And I go, a what? <laughs> what the hell's that, right? Yeah, straight up. Like, this is in 2008. Like, what? MMA? What's that stand for? He's like, mixed martial arts. Have you ever seen the UFC? And I was like, oh, yeah, I think so. Like, you know, a few yeah. times. And have you ever done jujitsu? Oh, yeah, a couple times in Maui. I had a friend that did it and showed me a triangle and stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. But never tried it. Never a class. Sure. And he was like, well, you should come try it. He was kind of hot, you know, so I was like, okay. <laughs> Get him every time. <laughs> Get to, yeah. It was like a double, double, um, double whammy got me in there. Uh, and then uh, I started training kickboxing in there for like, it was probably like a week or two. The MMA coach, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach. Well, he was uh, actually a brown belt at the time, jiu-jitsu, but uh, shoot box, black belt. Okay. Um, and we had a... Who was the the black belt there that we had um, jujitsu? Um, Rodrigo, um, no, Rodrigo. Uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on it. Uh, he was from Czech Mat. Anyways, I'll, I'll come back. Hobinho oh, is his, his okay. name. So Hobinho's there, and uh, Roberto Pisanini is the head coach, MMA coach, and he he says he comes over to me, he goes, "Hey, have you ever like uh, done jujitsu or done MMA or thought about fighting?" And I'm like, "No, I mean I wanted to, but I you know I didn't whatever whatever." whatever. So ends up uh, talking me into it one night and uh, I, I start training jujitsu like the next week. Um, and of course, like I'm, I'm like kind of timid. Like I'm like kind of grossed out by the thought of being with someone sweaty and like, <laughs> you know, just, it's weird to me, like definitely. Yeah. And so, and I'm a full adult, so I can understand when people come into my gym now because I wasn't a kid doing this. It's like, I, I get what yeah. you're going through right now. That like the weirdness. And, uh, and then have a, no women. So I grabbed like the cutest guy there, the youngest, cutest guy there. I was like, Hey, you're my partner. Like the whole time. <laughs> I just yeah. didn't like, I don't it's know. Okay. It, was, like, it was just weird to me. I, guys don't do that. Just for the, right. <laughs> for the men out there. Don't, you, don't do you don't that. You don't have now. to grab the cutest guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Don't grab the cutest guy. <laughs> the cutest guy. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 it helped like help me, you know, it helped me kind of yeah. get in, into, feeling comfortable and then like the next day I was fine like yeah. literally the next day I was like okay I'll just go with whoever but I think that like first day it was really necessary that I had someone who was like young and fun and comfortable and made it like easy for yeah. me you know I don't know what it would have been like if I had some creep yeah one, one of my coaches got married uh, last weekend and we did the reception it was, it, everyone there was jujitsu was from the gym every, nice. every, you know um and uh the girl, the we have a, a a big female presence in our school. That's a husband wife team, mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a big presence in the, a female presence in the school. And we were taught that some of the girls like started. They, actually, the girls they were like, "How come you?" We just had all the uh, got up. We just did a whole episode with with guys from the from the gym, <laughs> and the girls were like, "How come you never do one with the girls?" And I'm like, "I will absolutely have you guys on." Like, no, you never have any women on the. I'm like, I have women on the show all the time. I've got a guest next week. We just uh, Tubby Aliquin was on with her husband. Um, and we we got to talking about the whole the sweating thing because we have like a couple of guys that we we call there's one uh, teammate we have we call him Aquaman because he like sweats he'll like change his rash guard uh -huh. and his his gi top like in the middle of class because he sweats oh, so wow. much yeah but we were talking about the dripping of the sweat in the like, mouth yeah what's worth what's wor worse in the mouth or when you get one in the eyeball the mouth for sure. <laughs> I was like I feel like in the mouth I can spit that out like I can my I nah. can in the eye like you can't expel that. So in my mind, the eyeball is so almost oh, worse God. because now you're it. Now your liquids are mixing with my liquids. I could spit it what, out it's and not feel, still but mixing? I can feel like I've expelled you, but you it. Tasted you tasted know? it now. Yeah, yeah, I get I mean, that. I guess I, it still can come in through. Yeah, like, I was just like in my mind, I'm thinking about now. You're that's like worse. that's. I'm never getting that out. I'm not getting up and like washing my eyeball out. You know. But uh, we had this whole conversation. I'm sorry to go off on a tangent there, but we were just so having a conversation about how disgusting it. Because with most of the girls, when I first started there, it was we it was guys and girls, and we'd mix, and you know a guy could easily ask a, a girl to train. And then for a while, the the girls we have two rooms. We have one large room and then a smaller room, and the girls would train in that room mm -hmm. with a female coach, and it was just girls with girls. And it, the the program blew up, and she also did like some exercising programs for the girls. So. The program blew up. We are now all back in the same room. So it's just like, excuse me, so many of the, the students are used to it being separated. And I was there when it was okay. So like the guys are like slowly being like <laughs> doing to the girls, do you, do you want to roll? Like, you know, the other day it was like uh, we had an open map, but it was like 
we have a huge kids program and then it was all kids and women and like four guys but oh, then wow. there was like 15 kids and women so we had you know we had to switch it up so it's like it's solely coming back to our culture where we can like roll with each other okay. but i definitely like i've been there seven years so i'm telling like the guys like grab somebody that makes sense my coach always says uh grab somebody that makes sense and like let them work like don't you, you can't go in there yeah. like hulk smash you know so yeah. you have to use your your brain and, and yeah. not try to you know they're gonna they're going to leave they're going to leave yes. if the men are going to start smashing the girls you usually, yeah, just, usually running out the door i mean anybody in general you got to be mindful who you're rolling with right yeah Pop, big small like, we've got new. some big guys in my gym now too i was i used to be like the only big guy and then all of a sudden like everybody's bigger than me uh -oh. Two, 250 265. so now you know what it feels like yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back so you're talking about uh we were where were we? Uh, uh, started training in LA. In, in LA, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so I started, yeah. So I started training there. I was, I was there maybe about a month, um, maybe a month and a half, October, November. Yeah. And then my coach, uh, Roberto Piscinini, went to uh, Jackson Winklejohns to train Rashad mm -hmm. for the Machida fight. We had him on the show. Yeah. Um, Rashad, uh, Rashad, Rashad. Yeah, yeah Rashad. Love Rashad. We've been friends ever since that. So like yeah. he was the reason I ended up in, in Jackson Winks because of that thing, because of my coach being there. And then um, like full circle now we become friends through other other things, through psychedelic stuff and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So um, yeah, he's awesome. So uh, Rashad brought him out or he brought Rashad, he went out there to train with Rashad, for train Rashad. And then I went out there to train um, just to kind of check it out and started, you know, I remember sparring with Holly Holm and Michelle Watterson yeah. and just like the first, I hadn't, you know, I'd only had this one boxing amateur fight like 10 years previous. Yeah. So I didn't really have much to go on. And, and it now, was Now, do you really scary. understand who they are at that, that point when you're going in there? No. Like, cause Be you're still no, because, relatively new to the MMA side yes, of things. Yes. And, you know? you know, they were both professionals. Holly was just a boxer at that time. She, yeah. But she was also a kickboxer. So was she, she training was, at Jackson Wink when she just did kickboxing? Too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she made her yeah. transition to MMA there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. So she, uh, Wink was her boxing coach. And then she did, well, no, she actually started kickboxing first. Mm -hmm. And then she went into boxing and then she went to MMA. Okay. So uh, I remember kickboxing with her and like getting kicked and like blocking it, but still like getting like thrown over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then Julie Kedzie and, and, you know, all these, I mean, these girls were like taking it out on me, you yeah. know, they were trying to see if like I had what it takes yeah. and, but also like welcoming to me because I, I was tough enough to take it and, and get back up and keep yeah. coming, you know? So when my coach moved to Brazil, or back to Brazil, it was like um, a few months, maybe a month later, I uh, I moved back to Albuquerque because I didn't have a coach anymore. And I kind of had met these girls and I figured if I'm going to do this, I want to be again around women. And they had a pretty good sized women's team. So um, cost of living was cheaper, all that stuff. Sure. So I moved out there and actually met a sponsor and he paid for me to live in this extended stay for like nine months. Oh, wow. And all I did was, and pay for my food, pay for that and everything. So all I did was train every day, all day, nonstop. And I just, I, my yeah. level just rose super quick because I had that background in athletics, athletics, right? And I had, I knew how to train at that level. I knew what it took to eat and fuel my body and recover. Yeah. And so I was able to push myself and, and train at that level. And I just, Man, I just—it's hard if if you don't. I actually had this question. Like, I mean, I kind of—I guess I know the answer, but you do have to be obsessed, I guess, if yes. you want to use that right. But you have to be obsessed if you want to make it to the to the higher level. Like, you don't like if you do hear like a UFC fighter that's like also has a regular job during the day. Like that's you. There's usually like he starts making it and he leaves that. Like now he's you've got to train full yeah. time. You've yeah. got to make it. You know. Um, the way you eat is part of the job, right? The yeah, way you, that you train outside, the mm -hmm. way that you conduct yourself, the way that you, you know, everything you do is usually has to be about that training. Yes. Like, yeah. I'm not going to have that drink. I can't have that beer, yes. you know? Yeah, everything um, is everything you do. Yeah, right? And sleeping and eating and everything. Were you somebody that was very regimented? Was it like, I know that I need eight hours of sleep. I know that I'm going to eat this at this time. It gets pretty right? much. Yeah. yeah, I mean, especially in camp, you know, yeah. but like. Um, I always kept my weight pretty low and I, I never like blew up between camps and things like that. You also got to like, I might get this call, right? Yeah. They, yeah. They might call. I might yeah. be a film. And, and aren't they now like, I, I don't know if they always did this. I mean, you can answer this. 
now it's like, especially on the big fights, like they'll have a backup, like make weight because oh, yeah. just in case one of these guys falls out. Did, were they doing it way back then? Um, I mean, my fights way were never big then, enough to, yeah. to, to do that. But, um, you know, there were certainly times where even in the small shows that I would ask the um, promoters to do stuff like that because I'd had girls just repeatedly drop out from fights, yeah. you know, and, and they would like assure me, no, they're not, you know, and then yeah. sure enough, they yeah. would drop out. So that was really frustrating as I was coming up. Um, I you could, feel like they were dropping out because of who you were, that you were, they were scared or? I don't know. I don't, just like I don't life know. And I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think at the beginning, yes, because coming from a, a camp that I was coming from, they were, we were, you know, it was like, Jackson Winks, ATT, and um, and that was pretty much it for for women that were coming out at that okay, time yeah. when, when I first started. Um, there wasn't a lot of other women's like teams, and so yeah, I think if any other other women coming from like other gyms were kind of like uh you know, and so it was it was hard for me to get get fights, and I had um, I lost my first fight uh, decision, and then second fight I won by armbar in like a minute and a half, knocked a girl out in ten seconds in my third fight. Are these um, are these like local promotions or local like, promotions? Yeah. Where, where did you go for there was the first Invicta? one? Actually, the, the, no. So the first one I fought for victory. Okay. Um, it was in Council Bluffs. Okay. And that's actually pretty. I don't know if they're around anymore, but okay. it was a bigger show. It was like a lot. One of those that more regional feeders. Like, it, yeah. yeah. It was a feeder to bigger to sure. and stuff at that time, like an LFA kind of. Okay. Um, and then and then the the next few were a local show called. Um, oh my goodness. Miss your morning routine, Bar Pro. Special thank you to the crew over at Flow and Roll for all their support. Flow and Roll is renowned for their incredible nogi rash guards, shorts, and leggings. Flow and Roll has quickly become the premier custom apparel provider for academies big and small throughout the United States. Reach out today to discuss your custom order and ask about their incredible pre-order program. You can send an email to flowenroll at gmail.com or visit their Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll and shoot them a direct message. And yes, they can create an awesome custom gi for your academy as well. Visit flowandroll.com to check out their awesome designs, and while you're there, pick up a Jiu-Jitsu Dummy Signature Tee exclusively at flowandroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your purchase of T-shirts, rash guards, or geese with code JJD. I'm blanking on the name, but it was okay. like in Clovis, uh, New Mexico. Oh, Evolution. And it was like these two brothers that had started promotion, and they paid me pretty well and, and took care of me and stuff. It was pretty cool. Um uh, I think I fought for them for a few fights, and then I and then I got into XFC, which was on um, HDNet, okay, and then Access I, TV. I think they're still around. They're, they're still, still around, around yeah. yeah. Um, and that was kind of like my big jump into you know being on 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 TV and stuff like sure. that. Um, and I was fighting you know some of the the better girls and stuff. So and then from there I got into on um, Ultimate Fighter and. So tell us about how, like, how do you get that call or were they? So I didn't get a call. I had to try out. Okay. So this season that I was in, season 20, um, it was actually interesting. That they It was for the belt, right? So it was. And it's the, the first female season, first, right? Because I know. First all female season. Well, first so they all female had season. a season before, uh, I think it was 16, I believe, with, uh, or 18 maybe. It was Misha and Rhonda, right? Okay. But they had guys too. So mm -hmm. Misha and Rhonda were the coaches, but they had half women and half men. Okay. Um, and then my season was the first all women's, but we still had men coaches, okay. um, which was, uh, I had Melendez and then Pettis was the other coach. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was also for the new straw weight, um, belt because it was a new like introductory to straw, the straw weight division. So it was a big thing. And so yeah. what they did is they actually took six women from Invicta and they called, they called them and they said, I'm sorry, eight women, eight women from Invicta. And they said, we're going to uh, give you 30K or something like that. And don't take any fights for the next year or six months or whatever. You're going to be on the Ultimate Fighter. So the eight women, boom, they just got a ticket. Is it like a deal with Invicta, though? Like, okay, look, we're going to take these fighters. I guess. Or, you know, I, don't, I don't know yeah. exactly what. But they, yeah, so they got that, eight women. Then there was eight women that had a tryout. 
Okay. And one of those eight women that was on the show already picked was Felice Herrig, who I had fought in Bellator and broke my arm on her head and had like wow. a big like rivalry with this girl. Sure. Okay. So I knew when I knew she was in it, I was like, I'm getting in this. Shit. Like, there's no way they're not going to put me in this and give yeah. me this fight. This yeah. is, it's going to happen. And I, and I felt like I deserved to be there too. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, I had a pretty good record at the time and you know, just again, I'm training now at extreme couture. I'm Misha Tate's training partner. I'm like, I'm at the top of my game. I'm ready to go in there and win this fucking belt. Yeah. And I have the best training partners. I have the best coaches. Like I was on fire. I was so fucking ready. Trained a week with Benny the Jet. Like I went in there. My jujitsu was better. I, I think the the jujitsu that I had then, if I fought me now as a black belt, like how many years later, nine years later, I'd still would whoop my ass today because really? I was just, yeah, it was MMA. Yeah. I mean jujitsu MMA. You know, it's so yeah. yeah, and just how strong I was and how like sharp I was and just everything. I mean, I like to yeah. say that, but who knows? I don't know. I know a lot more than out today, yeah. but. You know, it was, I was just so ready. And then I go on the show, um, the first session, um, I'm going with, with Rose, Nama Yunus, and she puts me, she starts, we're in half guard and she starts to go for a Dars and I, I bridge <clears throat> her over and we go off the mat and I, I open like my eye right here. I like thir get 13 stitches in my eye. So I can't train for like a week or whatever. And again, I'm back to training a week later. I go with Rose again. She throws an overhand right, steps through, gets a takedown, tears my ACL. Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> and you, I, you've, you fought. Right? I fought. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know it was torn. I knew I felt it pop. I got up, I stepped down and I like had no stability and I was like, yeah. fuck. Right. Eesh. So I go sit down. I put my belt, my head, my foot leg up. I put some knee and I'm just thinking like, okay, all right, what the fuck am I going to do? And at this point I'm being bullied and nobody like the whole team's against me. Like I, it's me against they me. They didn't believe you, right? They didn't believe like, me. I, yeah. I, I, I have obviously been a long time. That's, I watched like the first 10 seasons religiously. Yeah. And then like, I just life took over, work took over. Trust and then me. I would see them sporadically. Uh, but that I re I did watch that full season. That was like one season that I watched, but I don't remember. Yes. But so I do remember that they did not believe you. Yeah. Right. And there was a whole like, yeah. they're like, you're faking it. Yeah. Right. It all the clothes yeah. came out kind of Yeah, yeah. Right? They, yeah. You're telling me I'm faking it and all this shit. So then I fight Felice anyway. I, I like went to the, to the fight by myself. There was this whole conspiracy about me um, taping my knee because the commission said I could tape my knee and then I taped it. And then they came in like five minutes before and said I had to take the tape off. Really? Which was bullshit. I didn't have to take that. Of course, I went in and make talk to them after and blah, blah, blah. And it was like this misunderstanding. She told them I had two neoprene sleeves on and I couldn't have two neo. I could only have tape and a neoprene sleeve. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it was like she just she was yeah. trying to get in my head. So anyways, um, I fought. I lost a decision. And um, and then I I found out like. My, my, I went, got an MRI and then I came back like a week later and I was like, bitches, yeah. here you go. Like torn, fully torn ACL. And they were like blown. Like yeah. they, they couldn't believe it. And they were, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But we, that went away you know, real quick too, right? Yeah. It was like five <laughs> minutes and then they were like, fuck you back again. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. And then, um, you know, I talked to would my, you, would you do that? Would you do that all over? Like. After you did that, was it like this is the best thing I've ever done, or this oh, was horrible? Worst certainly thing I've not ever the done? best thing I've ever done. No, uh, is it, <laughs> but in terms of like, you know, did it make me stronger, more patient, more um, un understanding of like myself, and and you know, it's like like going to jail. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. was, it was. Uh, they take your phones away. You can't communicate with yes. anybody. Take your phones away. There's no internet. There's no communication with friends, family, loved ones. Right? Yeah. None of that. Yeah. Wow. It was hard. It was really hard. It yeah. was. It was really hard and and not just because I tore my ACL, not because um, they were bullying me. It was like just in so many ways of like, you know, uh, trying to find myself and, and be patient with myself. And I think I did a pretty good job of like not giving those girls my power on that show. Like when they would come and and or be like in the kitchen, you know, literally making faces at me <laughs> like as far as you are from me right here like making faces talking shit about me and i would just be like this and i don't even know where that like patience and and um stability came from and, yeah. and like because i i don't know if i'd even have that now like let yeah. alone i don't know how i like some 
peaceful like entity came in and took over my body at that time because sure. I, I was able to really I, I would think I would say like a lot of times in those situations you got to remember like people normally shoot up they're attacking up because there's something about you that that yes. they're scared of or worried about right like you don't you know in those situations you're not shooting like I don't you're not on my radar right you're on my radar yep. so like almost like yeah there was they were scared they were worried they were nervous yeah. They heard about you. They heard who you were training with. Like, there has to be some of that. Yeah, but even after know. I was out of the competition, after I lost yeah. the fight and stuff, like, but they just, you know, I think people like that, um, you know, just have, they have a lot of insecurities and they, they think that if they pick on someone else, that they're going to make themselves feel better. Like, oh, well, if I bring that person mm -hmm. down, then I'm going to be better. Is it a know? camera time? And in, in that situation that too, with reality yeah. TV, is it a camera time thing? I think like, that okay, too. let's talk shit. And it could be simply like one person, like people just jump on the bandwagon and it's like, oh, this is working. They've got the camera on us, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, how did I wind up as the target? You know, it could be something as simple as I that. I think right? so. But, you know, I think those th those girls are just that way. Like, yeah. I think camera or no camera, they probably wouldn't have been doing it, honestly. Are you, are you friendly with anybody? Is, are, are any of those girls, like, still people that, like, you know, you talk to, communicate with? Um, is... I'm still really good friends with Tisha Torres, who's, okay. you know, like a sister to me. Um, she did. They just had a baby, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Tisha Pennington now? Tisha Pennington, I just saw, yes. like, the, uh, yes. I think... Uh, like official, like the name the fully name changed. changed. Yes, yeah, yes, I just yes. noticed it like yesterday, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you know, we're still very close. And then um, Alex Chambers, she's down in Miami, actually came and visited me recently um, at my gym. And um, I've seen JoJo a few times. And uh, who else have I seen from the show? Uh, I'm like, I mean, everybody's super cool. I, you know, Felice, I could care less uh seeing her <laughs> you know um back i think i saw once um and she was actually pretty cool to me it was a couple of years later mm -hmm. and um i was i think i had just been released from the ufc actually okay. and she said something about that being like bullshit yeah. so that was that was well you know if i beat you and then i get cut so and you're yeah. still there, it kind of like so it was yeah. nice of her to say that because she didn't yeah. have to say that so she was nice um at that time and uh and i, I think i've probably seen oh with Jessica Penne, I've seen around and she just, um, no, no, nothing there. Yeah. No. She Which, just, she just fought she, recently, right? Did she? Did she, she, she still fighting? I, I think I, she is. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah. feel like her last fight, she got tuned up a little bit. Yeah. I think, um, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's hard to watch everything. Like I, this whole world for me started with like loving, like it went from boxing. Is it like watching boxing with my dad as a kid? Uh, moved to Florida and I had some roommates that were like, you haven't heard of the UFC here. They're like, sit down, watch this. Yeah. Hooked from the, Hooked. It, this was like the Tito Liddell days, like that whole drama is when I started watching. I think that's like early 2000s. Yeah. Then I was hooked. And then just as I got older, I didn't start jujitsu until I was like 41. Nice. And I got into, I started like, I need to, like, I always hit, the, I always had like a punching bag hanging at my, in like the yard or yeah. the house or like always hitting the bag, taught myself how to like kick. And, and then I started doing a little Muay Thai and then a, a friend opened a jiu-jitsu gym and I'm like, I must like, <laughs> it was a family friend. We traded marketing services for jiu-jitsu, never paid him, trained with him Hell for like yeah. two years. We traded stuff. And, um, yeah. Th so I just was like, I must know this thing. Yeah. I, I tell people like, I felt I was in love with jiu-jitsu before I even did jiu-jitsu. I was just like wrestled a little in junior high. So I'm like, I felt like I could like, I'm sure. like, there's a, there's, you know, I can find something here that I can do and just loved it from, I was like, a like day one. Hell yeah. Like mainlined it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, it's, I know so it's I love obsessive. It from the beginning, but it's, um, it's awesome. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, with, with jujitsu specifically, now that you, you know, what you, you well, let, I, I know why you left, or let, let's tell everybody why you stopped doing MMA. Okay. So go ahead and tell that story if you can. All right. Sure. Um, I, uh, I was training. So after the Ultimate Fighter, I, uh, I was a, in um, Extreme Couture for a little bit. Okay. And then um, I had a couple more fights, blah, blah, blah. And then I, uh, my fight with, uh, after Alexa, I had broken my orbital. And then I went to the doctor to find out if I need surgery. And he told me that my orbital in my left eye, uh, the plate that I got after my Carolina fight, um, was so far back that if I got 
hit there. It could like go back and take all the optic nerves and blind wow. me basically. So that's what a doctor told me. So I thought my career was done. And, um, and so at that time I thought, well, I better get my nose, um, surgery because I had, it was just so it had been broken so yeah. many times. I thought, okay, after my last fight, I'll just have the promotion, whatever, you know, fix it. And it had just been broken in that fight. So this is a great opportunity thinking my career was over. So I got my nose fixed and then I went and saw three more doctors about my eye and got one doctor to say, no, you're good. <laughs> That's the right. He's the right one. He's the right one. He's the right yeah. One. And I just thought, well, if I blind, get blind in one eye, I have another, I have another eye, you know, <laughs> so I'll just be the pirate. Look at Bisbing, right? I right. think Bisbing was wearing a glass eye and nobody could, nobody called them out on no it, right? One nobody knew. knew. Yeah. So you could kind of tell it was just like, always like the same could. size, like people, but I, nobody said anything. Right. right? They, I think ahead. they were scared too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right, you know, I just, I, I still had some left yeah. in me. So I just moved to Colorado um, and I was uh, training at Factory X, um, had a fight with um, a, a Brazilian girl in Invicta and then won the fight through decision. I was getting ready for Mizuki who just fought Hannah um, Goldie this, okay. this past weekend in um, UFC. So it was before she got in the UFC and I was saying, okay, this is my fucking ticket like back to the UFC, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a co-main event in Invicta. This is like, I need to dominate this fucking fight. So I'm training and we're in, I'm in like um, technical sparring with this, uh, he's a 155er amateur guy. And he decides to show off and light me up. He yeah. like, you know, I don't even remember what, what punches it was or what kicked, but just like lit me up. And I remember it being super hard. I remember being really upset about it, saying something to my coach, cause it was the last round and saying, Hey, like, what the fuck was that? And, and Mark Montoya was like, I don't know. Let me go talk to him. You know, goes and talks to him. Next thing I know, I'm like taking my gear off. He comes over to me, pats me on the back, like good training. I'm like, fucking good training just wait till friday yeah. sparring and i'm at my fucking boyfriend come whoop your yeah. ass like i was so mad i'm not i'm not kidding you that's yeah. what i was thinking i'll never forget like i'm looking at him like yeah you're fucked yeah like my boyfriend's gonna come fuck you up right <laughs> and uh and that was what i was thinking i never got back to the gym really never that was it that was it last time you last ever time and um, it just started taking me into like a whirlwind of symptoms where i was having vertigo i was having um, you know, just my, I've had chronic migraines since that day. It's even, even now? Even Still? now. Wow. Yeah. Um, I've had, you know, just word issue, finding words like, um, just so many different yeah. symptoms that, that I can't seem to get past, even though I've done neurofeedback, I've done psychedelics, I've done, man. <laughs> Oh, and the have, psychedelics. Have you, have you met Bo? <laughs> did, Hi, Bo. You, did I introduce you to Bo before? He's our in-house uh, psychedelic. psychedelic expert. Awesome, and, uh, awesome. Right. <laughs> we'll have to talk. Um, but so, you know, I've, I've like, I've literally like done it all. I just did yeah. an NAD um, protocol that that was uh, one of the things that I hadn't tried yet. And it felt good. Uh, felt uh, felt horrible. I was doing it, but it, I felt like sharper for maybe a week after. Yeah. But now I feel like I've. Um, is it, I, I mean, to the point, or, is it like, is it debilitating? Is it like, can't get out of bed in the morning? Or is it just not like, anymore. Ah, it's fucking I there feel and like it's annoying. it was there at the beginning yeah. because I was not sure how to really deal with it and manage it. Yeah. And I think that now I'm able to manage it more. I know how to like, uh, like just take the medicine. So the, the migraine medication, they tell you that you should only take like 10 a month or something. Or was you're going to like, I don't know, harm yeah. yourself. And so I would like, just deal with migraines on those other days and just not, and sometimes not be able to get about out of bed or deal with stuff or not be able to teach. And then I was like, my dad has chronic migraines as well. And so I was talking to him, I was like, just fucking take the medicine. Yeah, like just take it, just take it. Times. And you know, you get, you'll get rebounds and just take it again. Mm -hmm. And like, sometimes I'll get up to get on prednisone to like break a cycle of like 12 days, wow. literally, yeah. you know? And, um, and so I've just kind of learned to manage it like that and just take the medicine. I don't know what the hell I'm doing and to myself. How, so how long ago was that sparring session? How, how I was 9-11, 2018. 9-11, 2018. Wow. Yeah. So. But we opened our gym, um, 10th planet Denver, 11, 1, 18. So just a couple of months later, yeah. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? I had like yeah. all this time on my hands. You know, yeah. I was used to be in training, literally wake up, train, come back, eat. Okay. Sleep, whatever yeah. train. Okay. Right. Wow. It's like, that was like all day, all every day. And, and then I had all this time on my hand. I wasn't working at the, at the time. And 
I was just training. And um, so I talked to Connor and I'm like, all right, he was a black belt under Eddie and wanting to open a 10th planet in his life at some point. But, yeah. you know, wasn't sure like this was the time he was he wasn't sure he was ready. He, he you know, he was like insecure of his abilities, but I knew he was great. I knew he could do it. And um, I think it just needed a little bit of push. And we opened and and then he stepped up and, you know, became this amazing coach, yeah. um, amazing leader. We we grew our team um, in four and a half years before I left. We had our team to uh, it was like, I think, 350 members right wow. before I left. So, nice. you know, and in, in doing, doing the math in my head. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. We, nice. we, we weren't doing so bad uh, or he's not doing so yeah. bad, uh, but it's OK. You know, I'm 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 doing doing my my now yeah. by myself and I'm the first woman, um, 10th planet oh, black really? belt to do it as, uh, on her own. Well, so congratulations. That's you. awesome. And, That's uh, awesome. it's like 170 moonheads and I'm the first woman. There's Is other, that what they call it. What it moonheads? Moon yes. Owners. 10th planet oh, moons. Moon yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Cause it, so it's a 10th. Oh. So each affiliation is a 10th planet moon. Okay. Yes. All right. So I got it. I'm, uh, I'm one of the first. <laughs> you know, the, we, there was a girl named Kim Ferguson. She was a purple belt. She had a gym in, in Van Nuys who um, I think it was like a karate gym. I think Eddie told me she turned it into a 10th planet had mm -hmm. some black belts teaching there. She taught the kids and stuff like that. So technically she's the first woman to have a 10th planet, but mm -hmm. I'm the first black belt, okay. female, 10th ten planet black belt. And there's only 22 in the world. Really? Yeah. Okay. 22 black belts. Women. 10th planet black belts. black belts not moons no okay. 170 moons i think there's like 280 black belts okay men and then 22 female 10th planet black belts wow that's awesome it's pretty cool so why boca what brought port, port, to florida so i uh when connor and i had decided to um to split we um you know i love denver i i was i was I was ready to, to live the rest of my life there. But then if it wasn't going to be Denver, it was going to be somewhere by the beach. Yeah. Um, the beach is just my vibe, you know? Yeah. And um, my frequency, there's just no doubt about it. And so my brother had just moved to West Palm. Okay. And I, he's like sending me videos and his dog on the beach. And it's just like gorgeous. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like Googled like 10th planets out here. And I started, you know, I saw, I saw Pompano and I saw, um, Miami and then, um, Palm Springs, which I think at the time he was, you know, Doel was still trying to figure out where he was going to be. So I was just like, okay, let me see. And I just started doing research and one thing led to the next. And like, I, I started seeing all these signs. Like I have these angel numbers on, tattooed on my, on my hands, three, 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 and one, one, one. And like, I started seeing them everywhere. And even once I moved here and just all the signs were just like pointing here, 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 here. Yeah. But I was actually thinking Fort Lauderdale. I wasn't thinking okay. Boca. And the reason I was thinking Fort Lauderdale, for obvious reasons, it's much bigger. It's right next to Miami. There's an airport there. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Seems like the better I the option. Nice. Okay. So seems like the better option. However, because there's a 10th planet Pompano and there's a 10th planet North Miami, it's Miami, but it's, he's in Pembroke Pines. Yeah. I had to be 10 miles um, from both locations and okay. when it has to be from the way, the way the crow flies. So direct yeah. shot. So when I did the circles, it put me right by the airport and the uh, Fort Lauderdale airport is just not nice. It's the airport and then the port and right. there's not a lot of people living there. There are not a lot of people there. It's not a very pretty place mm -hmm. by the airport. It's also um, when there was the flooding, like I just moved here and that whole, the whole airport flooded, whole Fort Lauderdale really? flooded. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys remember that? No, like in, in April. Th this year? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that. <laughs> From what? It just, just it was raining for yeah, like just, five oh, days. Just, straight. just rain? Straight oh, right. rain. I didn't even yeah. know about that. That's yeah. how and it was, the radar. There it were was. people in their cars getting out of their cars because they couldn't move. It was bad. Really? It yeah. was wow. so bad. I, I yeah. missed that whole thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. yeah. So sure. I was like, I mean, oh, maybe that's a sign yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's, uh, there's so much like coastal water down there and it's, you know, kind it's of like, sc it's scary living th there with all this like global warming and all the talk about the sea. The, like, yeah. How do you buy a house or build something that close to the coast? Right. Or... So, and I want to be East. I don't want to be West. So I was thinking mm -hmm. like, I want to, and, and also again, I'm, I'm very specifically look, have to be. So I was like, okay, let me just start looking in Boca, like North 10 miles North of okay. Pompano. Just let me see. I live in Delray, so that would be mm -hmm. even better mm -hmm. for me, actually. Okay. okay. 
And uh, and then I was like, okay, I started looking and um, I was working with Rose Gracie actually at the time on a photography business we were doing. And she goes, let's take a break. Let's go look at that location in Boca you, you showed me off LoopNet. Let's just take a drive. Okay, so we go take a drive and um, I pull up to this this shopping center to where this place is at and there's combat club Boca. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, I can't open 10th planet next to a MMA gym. That's not yeah. gonna work. And I go, well, let me go check it out. So I walk in and there's like crickets in there. There's like a yeah. guy in a gi and two guys in a gi. I was like, oh, uh, what's going on what's in the name of the place? It like was called combat club Boca. There's one in Lantana okay. and it's a bigger gym. Um, and it's got a lot of fighters there and stuff. And it's, it's, um, it's doing really well. And the guy wanted to, one of their, um, students wanted to do a franchise. He just said, you know, he basically wanted to see what it was like. Yeah wasn't what he wanted um so then he gave it back to the original owner and then i found it and the original owner was like yes let's let me sell it to you because yeah. i don't i really didn't want it to do this in the first place i don't have time for it as you can see it's like struggling um so we made a deal and that happened in like three days so it was like ready to you can move in Turn key. mats everything turnkey everything change literally the name, change yes. the sign on the door and you're good yep that's nice that's yeah. awesome it wasn't as easy as that. There's, oh, yeah. some, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not really yeah, easy. Yeah. And now you're a millionaire. Yeah, right. <laughs> thank um, you, thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> goodness. Uh, yeah, um, it's been really rewarding. I have yeah. like the best students. I've had um, just an amazing. Um, you know, I, I think yeah. just the, the again the energy. I really believe in like frequency and energy and and attract attract mm. attract like laws attract of, laws like, of attraction. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. and how like. That that um, we were just talking about it before you came in. Really about um, like I recently divorced, uh, and Sorry. the guys every time I come in, he, he 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 asked me today, and I was like, it's funny because Christian, our other producer, asked me last time I was here. He's like, so what's the dating like? Or are you getting on the apps and you're doing this stuff? And I go, I'm I'm not ready. Yeah, uh, it's still it's still new. I'm so busy with work. And I'm like, but I feel like I will put it out there when I'm ready. Yeah, and you know, it, it's as simple as just like telling people you're sure. going to start dating, or you know making eye contact with that person. Like really you start to put up the energy <laughs> sure. you start to tell people like I'm ready, but like, you know, maybe it's not actually verbal. So I do, I am a believer in like the power of the secret and, yeah. and that stuff. And like, you're going to put, you know, you're going to get back what you put out. Yes. So, yes. Um, and, and I have been getting the best people. Yeah. Um, and like building a team, we had our first competition a couple of weeks ago and I think we placed seventh. Yeah. Out of like 30 something teams in our first competition. With, with, uh, you did a, a new local, breed. A new breed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, how cool is that? Right. Yeah. And it was like, I was crying on the way there uh, with just emotion <laughs> of like, wow, this is like, I'm the head coach. Like, yeah. what? How you many know? students do you have now? Um, So we have 93 students. It's not so bad. And like, yeah, since June. So and June, July, August. In the short, that's a short amount of time. Months, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you're doing, are you, you like, like, you sounded like you were on the struggle bus, but in the beginning, or do you still feel it's like you're there? It's not the struggle bus so much. Mm. Like I feel abundant always. Like I'm yeah. not in lack. Yeah. I don't. I don't play that role. Yeah. I don't play that. I have everything I need. Thank so you. just so you know, <laughs> I do own a marketing company. Oh, cool. Um, and I'm not. It, I'm not like. Uh, I just can give you advice on the stuff to do. Sure. Um, that you can do on yourself. Like a lot of things you need for local business, you can do a lot of it on your own. It's not like I would say um, one of the first things you can do and the easiest things you can do is ask every one of your students to leave you a review yeah. on like Google. Have you done that? I haven't asked. Well, okay. So you got to, I have, I asked do you, once. do you have, you have a Google business profile, a, right? Yes. Your map listing, right? So if you walk have out my door, one of them go on there. The, the, there have a, I have a thing on the door that says, how was your class with a the QR code? QR code okay. You know? So, and I think like you'd see that walking so out, but you, you only gotta, time I said ask. something, I did say something cause we had a guy come in and and leave a pad review because he his kid had a ringworm okay. and I called him out on it and I asked him to leave and yeah. he will left and and put a one star review and I was like yeah. hey guys remember that guy last night that came in and well so they a few students went on and said something and then the guy ended up taking it off because I was gonna say I, you could flag that oh, no, yeah, in yeah. the future you could flag it try to get it taken down yeah um, have different people flag it yes right? so he ended yeah, up taking because yeah. okay. I I reached out to him like really. This is, you're going to yeah. be like this? Yeah. Like, I've been nothing but respectful to you and your kid. And then this is how you're going to treat me. Believe it or not, it's one of the most powerful things that you can control to get your Google business profile found more. Make sure you're in the right category because okay. it's martial arts school is yeah, the category yeah. for, for, for gyms, for anything martial arts. But like, that's something easy that you can do, but you do have to ask. You can't be afraid to ask, yeah. but it's such a powerful tool. It is. 
um, and then answer every review. Yes. You can I go know. in and answer everyone. Yeah. So do that, answer it. But and then I have like, like 50 reviews, I think. Yeah. It's not the, too bad. The, the consistency and frequency of getting the reviews uh, is almost more important than, than the amount. how many. Okay. So it's just like, uh, I tell somebody, don't like, because if I give somebody that advice, they get 50 reviews in month one and then they never get mm, another review. So like that will hurt. you having 50 reviews in one month and not getting another one for months, the guy that's getting one per week. Yeah. And has way less than 50 because he's more consistent is just giving Google that algorithm. signal and is going to get found more and more. So a lot of times what happens is people don't stay consistent with those things. Okay. And then add, adding picture, tell them to add a picture. Yeah. You add pictures like those. Okay. Consistency and frequency of updating that is what is going to get it found more. Okay. So it's just like not, it's not, uh, you know, um, build it and they will come. Yeah. You have to. It's it's more, that page is more important than your website. Okay. Because, right, most people will find the website because sure. they found that, then click on the sure, website, sure. right? Uh, so, yeah, so that, that's okay. like our main product and the main thing that we work with clients on is that, is that the Google sense. business profile and doing those things and stuff. In Denver, we used, or Connor used to do it because he did all the that stuff. Um, he would send, anytime we would get a visitor, he would send them like, hey, if you had a great, you know, time yeah, or like whatever. Yeah, like, did it, he do it privately? Do you have like a CRM? Private. Like, he I know privates. like people are using Kicksite. Uh, no, yeah. you just text them. Yeah. yeah we didn't yeah. have any. If you have like a CRM, you could do it directly from the CRM. Like, we went one. through a launch for, for a minute and then we, they were yeah. horrible yeah. customer service. I think my, I think my coach is just switching to Kicksite mm. and I actually just started working with Aviv. Mm. In, in Boynton, mm -hmm. um, they knew my coach, uh, Sophia Amarante, they were their friends. And uh, she actually recommended this to me like a year ago. We spoke and they were like, we're gonna get back to you. And then it was like a year, oh, <laughs> a year wow. later, like we've been busy. Uh, can we, let's, Is we wanna talk about it. What's her name? She had um, the... That's Anna Carolina Vieira. Yes. And I and her uh, the wife is wife. Uh, is they call everybody calls her baby. I know her by baby. Yeah. I think. So. But Luana, Anna was Luana. the one that no Luana was the one that recently got put to sleep right on the mat. No, it was Anna Carolina. Was Anna. I believe. Okay. Yeah, she got. I think she got her. I haven't spoken to her about that directly. We a lot of our communication has been through text. But uh, we were as actually before she left for that competition. She's like, hey, we're going to get started, and then that happened, and I'm like, ooh, let Scary. me not follow up, and then. Uh, so I haven't even gotten like her take on it. I just know like she got put you out. You know, really only thing bad, right? I know is Rose ca Gracie called me. We spoke right after that, like that day, and she was like, "Heather, you don't even understand. Like they didn't know what to do. I had to run on the so mat." What what ex what happened exactly? Because I haven't seen All it. I that know she, is she got she, put out. Yeah, and they, but like she was out for a and long they were, time. No one was touching. No one. Yeah, it, yeah, and she, nobody's touching or nothing. She like Rose Gracie, like g got everyone out of the way, and she got on the mat yeah. and like. You know, she was out her. for a very long time. Yeah. She went to the hospital. Did she go to the hospital? Right. Yeah. I think she spent a little time so. in the hospital. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So scary. It just like, come on. This was IBJJF, right? It's yeah. like, w what the fuck, bro? Like, get, yeah. Get. Why is there not a medic there? I, I gotta be honest. I didn't see the entire match. I just saw like the clip of that that part of her scary. being out. So yeah, scary. So, so start just started working with them, but not on what I just described and doing like the Google ads with them. Um, but with they, the kick, they wanted the... To do but but I but I it, I know that she's using Kicksite kick because we had to add like a Google Tag Manager, so we had to send the code to them, and so okay. they, I got an email back and forth. So so I know a lot of people that use it. I know they're using it successfully, and I, again, I, I'm almost positive because my school just went to the whole like I like check in on the iPad, put your number in, and, and check in. Who are they using? Um, I believe it's Kicksite. We oh. just went over to that, and now we have that. I, 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 I'm I can't with be Zen 100%. Planner. Okay, but and Zen Planner. Are they, Martial arts it's specific all, yeah, though? Yeah, it yeah, is? Martial, okay. Mar uh, yeah, martial arts specific, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. what who we used in Denver. And so when I got this gym and every, it was like, it happened so fast. I was like, yeah. I don't, I can't learn anything new right now. Yeah. I just yeah. needed to like, See, we had, they had yeah. mind body originally and I just switched it over to Zen Planner because yeah. I was like, I, mind body is the worst. That's usually, th that's the hard part. And that's like, it's hard to like hire somebody in house. It's hard to hire somebody outside. And then like you're building the business but that's for any, like I work, we, it's black belt digital marketing, but like I have more clients in w tons of other industries than I do any in, in MMA or, or jujitsu. And it's, but this is the same thing for everybody. It's, you've got to, you have to do these things, but it's the thing that everybody has to put on the back. They feel like they have to put it but on the back the burner, thing. but it's the most important I thing. I mean, it's just like, you want people to come to the door. So it's like, again, you know, it's not built and they will come. You could have, a, unless you're like already famous right. and just like have a following in the area, sure. it's hard to get it off the ground. But I mean, it, the 90 students is not it's bad. In, the, in four months, 90 students, that's like, 
It's, I don't want to say it's unheard of, but that's yeah, really good. Appreciate it. It's the it's the name. It's, the yeah. it's not my name. It's the yeah. 10th planet name. Yeah. I mean, my uh, name helps for yeah. sure. Like the what I've done and accomplished. Yeah. Certainly if they go on the website because they yeah. heard a 10th planet and then they see, oh, okay. You know, Are you, like male, female kids. How, how do you feel like what's your, like your ratios? Uh, I wish we I had would more say women. Like, I was going to say like, okay, so women head coach is the owner. Like, you know, does it, or oh, is it just 10th planet and everybody's, it's just like, we're all together. Yeah. yeah I mean, we have, good. I don't teach the kids classes. Um, <laughs> yeah. We have four kids classes and I have um, two black belts that were actually at the combat club Boca before okay. I bought it. And I kept them on to teach the kids classes. Um, and they're awesome, both pro, pro, uh, pro fighters and okay. black belts. Um, but they, uh, yeah, I teach, and then they, I have them teach another couple classes and then I do majoritively the other classes. I just hired another black belt to teach, um, a leg lex class on Sundays. Okay. I have a laborio black belt teaching a comp mm. class on Sundays. So there's, we have, uh, yeah, five black belts now on That's awesome. staff. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. You know, and for a small gym like that, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I don't know what, what was the question? <laughs> Where were we going? But we were talking about, uh, struggling, struggling. struggling. With, yes, struggling yes. And... Um, so yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because of the 10th planet name. It like brings in a lot, sure. but could I be doing more? Yes. But at the same time, I've been, forgive me, my, my computer's dying. So I'm bringing yeah, up my worries. outline here. <laughs> <They're worse. laughs> um, I think that there's there's a something to be said about growing slowly so that it sure. keeps the culture that I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually Yelp called me recently trying to get me to buy ads and I was like, I'm not interested right now in ads because I'm getting, you know, about 2 to 3 signups a week right now and that's as much as I can really manage. Okay. Because of the way that I, you know, I'm doing this on my own. Now, I would um I have a a friend coming um named Travis uh, Kalanick and, and his wife, uh, Nick Dooley, that they're old training partners of mine and they're going to be moving out in a couple months. And I'm really looking forward to sharing some of these, um, you know, things that I'm doing in the gym to help. And he's going to help okay. me. He's ran a gym in, in LA, uh, not in LA and, um, Oxnard, California, and just has some experience. So to be able to like have someone maybe to, to, to do some of these things and, and, and I don't mind like paying and then yeah. building and then, you know, like I'm going to tell you, I, I'll tell you off air my, t my, my take on Yelp. Yeah. Um, I, I, boom. Oh, I would <laughs> never, I would never it, pay for no, ads yeah, on it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the positives and negatives of doing it when you're like ready to do it. Yeah. Um, I'll undo it. I've yeah, already yeah. talked to so many okay. people about it yeah. and like, it's no, I yeah. wouldn't do it. But I was just saying like the, the whole point of why I was, I don't even know why I gave my energy to that, but it was like, the whole point was just that I don't, you I want to keep handle the culture. The, you, yeah, you I can't can handle, handle it, it as, as my, for my running it by myself right now. I want to be able to keep remembering people's names. I want to yeah. have, like when I start class, I start with, hey guys, what's up? How's everybody yeah. doing? Anybody got some special news they want to share? Anyone do anything mm. special, anything coming up? Like, let's connect first. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is a, this is like not just about jujitsu. This is about community and camaraderie, yeah. and like about supporting each other. So. I got to always have that. What you, know? you described, I call it when I'm talking to a, a, a business and I'm doing this for my, my marketing company. I've owned a marketing company before for eight years, worked for somebody else for six, and then now open for two post COVID. Uh, nice. November is two years. Okay. I call it con controlled growth. Yep. Um, you definitely, my biggest enemy is having too much business. I got lucky with like big and referral groups and, and been like everything is referrals. So controlled growth and being very careful not to bite off more than I can chew and definitely yeah. being able to say as a marketing company, being able to say, I don't think we're the right fit for you. Where my first marketing company, I took everything. Everyone, yeah. I was like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then I, again, I joined another marketing company and, and kind of learned the secrets. But. And if you have all these new people coming in, right, then like the people that have been there are gonna get lost a little bit. And like yeah. they're more important than the new people to me. Yeah. You know, it's like we stopped giving um, punch cards back in the day because it's like, oh, you're going to come in. I'm not going to give incentive to let you come in once a month, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you're going to take all my time trying to meet me to explain the move when my guys that have been here every single day should be the ones getting my time. Would a punch card like to get like free class or something? Well, or like uh, 20 classes for, you know, okay. X amount. So instead of coming in and paying a drop in for $25, you get a punch card for, you know, 200. It's, you know, $20 instead okay. of 25. So I'm giving you okay. a break. But I'm not, then we start stop doing that. Once it was a pain in the ass to keep track. 
Two, I'm not going to make it incentivize. I'm not going to incentivize somebody to come, you know, once or twice a month or whatever, mm -hmm. because you're the ones that I'm going to be spending way more time with. Yeah. And I want to incentivize, right? That's why members that get year contracts get cheaper dues because okay. they're going to be coming in. They're making that commitment. They're going to be coming in hopefully more. And those are the ones that I want to be giving my energy to. And I think a lot of yeah. coaches mess that up. I think that they are like, oh, I got to get more new members, new members, new members, new members. And they're like focusing on the new members because I want to get those signups. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to give you to like the assistant coaches mm -hmm. really. And then I'm focusing on, on the, on my guys, you know, yeah. and hopefully the new guys are seeing how I'm treating <coughs> them but also the ones that have been here and sure. that, that they'll see that that's how they're going to be treated too you know the other thing i say besides the controlled growth is like when i'm giving advice to a company I'm, i usually tell them to like let the business steer mm -hmm. the business is going to kind of tell you where it needs to go it will tell you like okay it's time to advertise like you'll feel right. it you'll know but it's okay to take those cues like again i my first company, it was like uh, motorsports related, and this was 2008, and the bottom fell out of the motorsports industry. So we were like, okay, I guess we're not doing that. Right. And we quickly changed the name, Bo worked with me back then, and we like changed the logo on the website, and we're like, maybe we have to sell to everybody. Um, and even like now, it's like Black Belt Digital Marketing. I never, it was never meant to just like to market to MMA or BJJ, sure. but it's like I do jujitsu and. I say, I'm a black belt at marketing. I'm a brown belt in jujitsu, but I'm a black belt at marketing is my little tagline that I say for now. And, but it's not related to that. The business just like, it steered me towards just like working with everybody. So it's just uh -huh. like, you know, I, I, I follow that and, and it's served me well, cool. you know, so, I, you know, and again, I, when you said 90, I, I did not think you would say 90 students in four months. So, I mean, that's really good. And then like, you know, it'll keep on, it'll Thank keep you. on going the right direction, you know? Um, all right. So we've got a couple of listener questions and then we go, we'll go into what we call our drill down where we go. These are like kind of like the most common questions that we get from everybody. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go through those and okay. then, uh, then we'll wrap it up. Sweet. So, okay. Uh, I, I'm sure that one of this, one of these, or maybe both of them know you, I know one of them, you'll, you'll know why. Okay. Um, I think he probably knows you, but we're going to go with the first one. Uh, this first one's from Munzee 3 on Instagram. It says, hi, Heather. What is your favorite submission or technique? All right. I think that's from my friend Ray Ray. But now, you might have to you might have to give us the not just the 10th planet name of yes. that move. You yeah. got to tell us like the common okay. name. Okay. <laughs> well, I only know it as a 10th planet The wibbly planet wibbly, move. the wibbly wobbly. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think there's another name. I don't think anybody else is okay. doing it. Okay. So do it. my favorite, like today, these lately is, is, is the truck is I've been putting people in okay. the truck. That and one finishing. I know. Yes. We call that one the truck. <laughs> you call it the truck. We do call yes. it the truck. So um, I've been putting, you know, I've been really kind of dissecting that position for a few years mm -hmm. and I feel feel like I'm really getting it these days. Yeah. Um, I met somebody in Austin named Kamoy Anderson, who's like, Eddie says one of the best truckers in, in the world, yeah. one of the best. And I did a little private with him and he showed me some, some like entries and from him showing those entries, I've like understood it to another level. And now I'm like breaking it down for my students even more. And I just, I'm in love with it. So from the truck though, it's just a position. I like to go, um, to the snap to like the, the calf crank. Okay. Um, or, uh, the ultra crotch ripper. <laughs> I think we call that the PP splitter. Uh, we, call, like, yeah. It's like a banana split, but it's, it's a yes. little bit more. So like banana split, you're like going this way, which the crotch yeah. ripper, you're like, you're, you're, you're like ripping the legs like this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My, I, I, uh, my coach does a lot of lockdown. So like I've, we, he, him and Brandon, like, uh, I think kind of exchange ideas every once in a while. Um, that like Brandon's got Brandon McCaffrey's got some mm -hmm. great stuff out there Amazing. with that. Uh, my coach got us into the lockdown, and now we have like this like on Friday nights we do a no gi only, and it's turned into all we do is variations of the lockdown into some things that he's kind of played with, and that's it. Awesome. So we just do that, and then we have like uh, it's usually we consider it like an advanced class, so it's just like no white belts, yeah. like or you're competing maybe, but. It's the higher level guys, and we're just that's all just we do for one hour is rolling, uh, not rolling, uh, just doing uh, drilling variations of that. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, this is one thing I don't know that what anybody else would call it, but it's like you're in the lockdown, you're letting go of the lockdown, and kind of you fold the leg to the outside. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a, a name to that, for that. Are you put with the butterfly? Um, so if, if I'm on the inside lock, like if I'm on the inside lockdown, uh -huh. right, I'm letting go and then I'm folding their leg. So now their leg is they've got a roll. Ah. So like if I'm if I'm being locked down on this leg, yeah. I'm letting it go and my leg is being cranked this way. So I've got to I've got to give up the sweep. 
Okay, so um, we I think it's called the grandfather sweep, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I think, I, we, look it we, up. We call it the fold. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one's um, like a simple name. So we, we get there from, uh, so if we're in like side control and we start doing uh, what we call the claw, which is you take that outside leg to grab that leg. So you're pulling them into gotcha. half yeah, guard, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they resist. Mm-hmm. And then that leg is out yeah. like that. And then you, and then you sweep them okay. um, from side control, which is it's the same yeah. position. I, I believe that's called the grandfather sweep. I'll okay. have to double check. That's on where that. I, I mentioned happy baby before as one of our like joke from the lockdown to like, uh, I, I think it's like the beginning of what you guys would do, like the whip down, like bringing somebody, getting them mm-hmm. up. We call it happy baby. Cause you're picking them up oh, under like, nice. happy baby. Happy baby. <laughs> nice. All right. The next question is David Rodriguez. Do you know who David is? I don't. Okay. Cause this, when they ask a silly question, I'm like, they must know. They said, what's your favorite cereal and why? Oh, um, <laughs> shit. This guy, he just wants a free t-shirt. He we give out a t-shirt, t-shirt or a mug. So that's all. I'm like, either they know you or they're at, they want a free t-shirt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, I haven't been eating cereal these days. Um, if I have cereal, it's usually granola in my acai bowls. Oh, that I really? Make. Yeah. Granola? Okay. And I've been eating them with my favorite protein called Fida Protein okay. by a old UFC vet um, who, uh, oh my gosh, I'm just loving my word finding today. That's okay. I have um, that problem right here. This, <laughs> yeah, right. Actually, yeah. I, this is part of why I started taking it. I'm like that. When they, when they came it to helps. us, I was just like... My recall is getting horrible the older I get. So I'm always like, stage. guys, like, okay. Uh, for, oh, yeah. I mean, I haven't gotten hit in I'll the head a lot, okay. so I don't know. So for me, it's definitely age. I'm like 50 now, so it's like. You don't look 50. Thank you. <laughs> oh, James Wilkes. James Wilkes. I know. Uh, I know that name. You know that? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. he was on Ultimate Fighter, I believe. So he, the, the one yeah. of the beginner, beginning okay. ones. And yeah. uh, he has a, uh, yeah, a protein named Fida. Fida. Okay. F T. But FTYA or something is okay. so good. It's plant based, yeah. but it's amazing. It tastes good. Doesn't have any stevia or any like artificial yeah. shit. Which, by the way, you gotta check out. That stuff is gonna yeah. kill people. I don't. I honey, honey on everything. I don't even keep sugar in the house. That's good. Only honey. That's good. Um, but like my we, uh, I'm since no one's ever asked me my favorite cereal on the show, uh, fruity pebbles. But I never get it. Cause I will, it's that so bad for you. they usually like, like the only store, five and the like. only store that has like the bigger boxes. If you go to like Walmart, yeah. the shopping, the, the ones with the shop, the, the grocery stores inside of it, um, they'll sell like the bigger family size ones, but all the other stores always have the little one. So I feel like if I went out drinking with my friends back in the day, there was a seven 11 by my building and I would stop and get a milk. And a little box. And the box. Cause it was always the small box that they sold. And I would eat that entire thing. Ooh. in like a big bowl and just eat that whole thing oh and then go God. to sleep. So that oh was like, that's God. like my guilty pleasure, but I don't get it because I'll eat it like that. So I don't, I love it, but I would, I can't, so bad. I don't keep anything good in the house. That's like everything for me. Th- these days I'm trying to do good. Like everything is whole foods, organic. If I can get awesome. it, my junk food is even organic, you know, or like low sugar and stuff like yeah. that. Sometimes awesome. it's boring. I was like, Hey, if you need some recipes, I, I got, I got you. I had there's a, there's a place called pliables. I, I know they're amazing. You, pliables. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yeah, super good. And I'll get like uh, I'll I'll it, I live I just moved across the street from it now walking distance my building I just walk wow. downstairs and I can go across the street, and um, that's like you said the granola like I'll get like extra I'll always keep like some extra granola at the house just to just put some extra on it because if you get extra like you don't need if I don't eat it all it gets wet and right, soggy right, so right. one thing that you can't put it in the fridge and eat the next day because it gets soggy sure. so I like always get some on the side but that's like that's. That satisfies my sweet. Totally. You know, they put honey on it. Mm-hmm. They'll get like some extra pineapple. Some that, that satisfies my sweet tooth. That's my thing. Yeah. It's really hard to, for me, it's hard to diet because of the sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth too. But if you get off of it for a while and you just do fruit, then when you go back to it, you're like, oh, that yeah. shit's gross. Yeah. Um, I bet if you haven't had like real, like, sh- can- like crappy sugar, anything yeah. in a while, I bet if you tried it right now, you would be grossed out. I, I you know, my wife would get like the canister. So she'd like grab a canister from work, just like when we were, we're, we're going to have company or there's a party, like, and we know we have to like serve coffee at some point, like she'd have, she'd get it. And then it would stay in the fridge forever and no one would use it. Maybe if I ran out of honey, I would try it. And then I'd be like, oh, this is so I, like, first of all, it would be like, it's not going to taste the same. It yeah. tastes bad. And then also like, oh, what am I doing to myself? But I just mean like try a freaking uh, uh, Snickers oh. or Reese's Pieces yeah. or something. And you're going to yeah. be like, if you haven't had that shit in a while and you've just yeah. been eating real fruit sugar. 
It yeah. just tastes crap. Okay, like, okay, and you'll be mean. turned off of it. But if you make yourself eat it and then you yeah. keep eating it, you'll get it right back, that yeah, craving. It's crazy. Yeah. It's no, I mean, because I've cut weight, right? So many a times and cut it out and then the same thing and then you just like get back on that shit. I'm trying it's to like, get back to like a, like a higher protein diet, getting like working out more higher protein. Nice. But it's it's hard. Like I don't crave like people like I think, like if they don't eat steak for a while, they crave steak. Like I don't crave red meat, so that's kind of like a good thing. I'm vegan, but so. I'm also okay. So did you? But you ate meat at some point. Like, do you crave 22 it? Twenty two years. Do you have? Oh, twenty two. That's a long time. Do you? <laughs> do you ever crave it? Like, no. do you see a steak and be like, oh, that steak would be so good right now? No, this is the other way. Is it more for the health or the animal cruelty All side of it, it or both? Yeah. 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 Now, like, yeah. I mean, I used to not be so bad. I've gotten really bad now. I see it. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. I'm, I, I've got some training partners around me that are like, got to eat it, got to eat the meat, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I know the, my listeners will probably, I, I've said this a million times, talk about it so often, it's a big part of me. I did have a heart attack, uh, geez, like six years ago now. Yes. So after that, I went, like, I did vegan for a little bit, then I backed into just, like, vegetarian, and then I backed into pescatarian, and now I'm just, like, back. Okay. But just, like, again, it's like, if I eat meat, it's like the organic, I'm mm -hmm. buying the organic. Like, I feel like... I think it's less about the meat or the eggs and the high cholesterol and it's more about the chemicals and the other things that are in it, you sure. know, like, so I'm going to, if I'm going to eat what's, what they're, my cardiologist would consider bad, yeah. I'm eating the organic or sure. whole foods version of it. And you've been checking and everything's good, right? Yeah. Yo, yeah. I'm like, they're like, You're doing uh, good. Uh, yeah, I did a, my last stress test last year. She's the, the doctor. So she's like, um, you have a normal heart. And I said, normal for somebody who had a heart attack or normal for somebody might, she's like, Normal, normal. Like, there's only one normal. You're normal. You're good. And uh, she gave me the okay to like start trying some like supplements. And I was going right. to do TRT, but I didn't do TRT. I was like, a okay. mm, uh, little too much. I don't want to, you know, start yeah. sticking stuff in my body. I'm not ready for that yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. But I know that's like a big thing for at least the guys in this community. Actually, I've had to go yeah. on testosterone replacement. Yeah. I uh, after I got my concussion. You know, one of the things that they say is hormonal stuff, right? Yeah. A lot of veterans, lots of them, they're realizing from brain trauma mm -hmm. that it affects your hormones. Mm -hmm. So I obviously been testing that over the last four years or five years now. And it was always normal until I did it once. And it was three. What, norm, so what women mean, are normal? supposed to be okay. uh, between 80 and 100 is what my doctor told me. Okay. Mine was three. Oh, okay. Three, right. like number three. And yeah. so I had to, I had to go on replacement. Is that... Is part of that like you were such a high level for so long, like long, and your I body's producing it, it could because be. of the the could activity? Be. It you know, could the, be, the or it could be brain doing. trauma. It could yeah. be, you know, just age. It could yeah. be um, like my um, like hormonally because I'm going to premenopausal, and so that's messing with my estrogen and my progesterone, and it's like a clock, right? So like if in the progesterone and estrogen is off, then the testosterone's off. And then if the testosterone mm -hmm. gets better, then that gets better. So it's like, yeah. you kind of have to play with this um, one or the other and which one you got to do. And like, first I went on progesterone and it, it, oh man, I had like all these crazy symptoms. And then um, I was like, well, let's try just see the t testosterone. And then I realized there, and then I started doing that and I feel so much better. Yeah. So much better. I have one other question. This is something that I've asked a, a few of the 10th planet people that we've had on before. So there's this aura around, like when you go to a competition, you see the 10th planet rash guard, you're yeah. like, oh, gee, oh, oh gosh, I don't, you know, <laughs> I know people like, I don't compete right now, but I've competed at my lower belts and like, oh shit, 10th planet guy, like, oh God, well, watch your legs, right? You know, for, Forget about the allure for a second. My question is like, so somebody that wants to come into a 10th planet who's been doing jujitsu like nine years in, it's so, it seems so interesting to me, but it also seems scary. Like there's, it's like starting over, mm. but the higher, the longer I get in this, the less I'm more like, I would not mind. Like, I, I guess I point it like Rogan, like Rogan did jujitsu, right? He was a black belt first and then he went into 10th planet. I, I, he, he's a black belt under Eddie. Hegan Machado. E and end under Eddie. I yeah. believe that he has, like, he had his jujitsu black belt from Hegan, and then he went to Eddie. I th I, I thought know. that's what it was. I thought that was kind of what he did, or at least he maybe has like a belt under both. Yeah. But I feel like, like I, I'm not scared to say like, 
I'm a brown belt in my school's jujitsu. Okay. I've been there so long. I'm a black belt. I'm not black belt, a brown belt in my school's jujitsu. I would, as a lower belt, I probably would been like, I don't want to go some start someplace new, and I'm going to get held yeah. back. Now I'm like, now it intrigues me. Sure. Do you have people that come in like that, like from other sure. schools? It's yeah. like, what's that? What's that workflow for them? Like, like the they've got to start in the big. Like, there's I don't I have no. It's it, not, I don't care about the level that I am called or anything yeah. like that. It's like, wow, I've got to really, I'm like learning jujitsu all over again because yeah. it's such a unique it's, version it's of jujitsu. It's a very great question. And I get it a lot from upper belts that come in, right? Sure. All belts, it blew up. And whatever belt you are, you come in, your belt, you're that mm -hmm. belt. Now, in terms of getting to the next belt, you do need to come up and learn the, the language, mm -hmm. right? But it's not, if you are, as a brown belt, for you to learn the language is going to take you much shorter time because you understand the concepts of jujitsu. Sure. For me to teach you a move or a 10 one of the warm-up flows, I could teach you that probably in, in 20 minutes. If I took a white belt, it's going to take yeah. me hours to teach that, right? So, and they're still not going to know it. They're not going to remember it, but I could teach it to you and you're probably going to mm. remember it because you understand the concepts. You probably have some of the moves already even made. It just is a different like I said, name. It's a different name. Yeah. yeah. Or just a slight different variation to it. Right. And so, um, I have uh, a purple belt, a, a woman who just joined my team from Brazilian top team. Um, and she's with me and, and, you know, I've kind of explained this too. It's like, I, it, it, you know, the more the more she comes and learns this language, she's just going to get promoted as a 10th planet black belt. I mean, brown belt in the system because now she knows what she knows, but she also knows this. Mm -hmm. And then there's coaches out there that don't even go off of the warm ups that don't even necessarily have all the 10th planet. Like you could be, um, you know, getting. Uh, a blue belt or a purple belt and not really even know rubber guard, but mm -hmm. you're figuring you're good at what you're good at and you're understanding the game and you're understanding the concepts and you're, you're not, you know, getting tapped or you're whatever. Like there's so, mm -hmm. so I guess what the point is, is for, at least for me and for Denver, we don't have a set curriculum for a blue belt, a purple belt, a brown belt, right? It's based more on, um, like understanding the game and to what level you understand that game. Okay. And then, you know, the warm ups are a great uh, staple of the curriculum for in terms of how I promote. So sure. if you can go and learn um, like the warm ups, um, you're pretty much should be a blue belt. Like if you could yeah. run through the warm up okay. and understand that, like and not just saying that you're going to be pulling those all those moves off in live roles, but that like you can understand the fundamental. Those are all pretty much fundamental moves. I'm um, even more so than that. So I have created a curriculum as well um, over the last couple of years of 45 classes. And that's what I teach in my fundamental classes. And those are, some are 10 planet names. There's a truck day, but then there's also an arm bar day. And then there's an arm bar that I call the nasty arm bar. That's an arm drag arm bar. And it's not a 10th planet name, but it's part of my fundamental curriculum, you know? Okay. So like I be coming from other outside jujitsu and my jujitsu is probably a mix of all different types of mm -hmm. jujitsu, right? Cause it's catch wrestling, some stuff that I met, you know, got from Misha um, and then Robert Fallis, you know, he's got it. It's very like Randy Couture and Matt Lindlin. So it's very wrestling based stuff. Sure. And then, you know, I get the stuff from Gracie Baja, like one of my coaches, um, Barata um, and Gracie Baja taught me stuff. So like, I have a very like, eclectic jujitsu okay. style and I'm going to teach not just 10th planet stuff. I'm going to teach what works for me. And then I'm going to bring in my guy. Like I just hired this guy, Jason, um, a black belt to teach his leg lock. And I want him to teach the way he does it. Now, now I want him to teach also learn the 10th planet. Like this is honey hole, you know, and this not four eleven or whatever, or, you know, Ashi is Ashi and not, I don't know what all the other names. So like, yeah. he's got like, we have to kind of come to this same, um, like, the guys that are teaching need to know, together, yeah, right? they got to bring them together and know like, this is what I learned it as, but this is the 10th planet okay. name. But you know, in terms of like doing it uh, this way, that's, yeah. it's an art. It's not a science. How flexible does, so, uh, and I'm, this is really me asking, cause I know sure. the longer I do this, the Lex, Flex. Less flexible I am. It's just like the how more, why is this the going, more you do the less this flexible. Going in a way? Yeah. I, like, but you know, it's funny. Like when I just go stretch. Yeah. I'm like, oh God, you know, but then when I wrote, you know, yeah, you know I, I don't know this. When you're warm. Yeah. I'm like, once I'm warmed up and I'm like, I do this really weird, just like, 
I don't I don't even know if you would call it guard. I just like totally open my legs and lay on my back to like get people to come in. You yeah. Know? And they're like, what is this? Because they can't reach my legs to like flip me or do that kind of stuff. So um I like when I'm on the floor doing that, I'm just like, oh, I can't even stretch. But then yoga. I do that and they're like, what that? Yeah. Yoga. But, so, yeah. Is that, is, yoga. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've done like I do like uh, some yoga stretch. I'm horrible at the stretching. I'm usually so sore that I'm like massage gunning before Great. class more than stretching. Mm. So that's like bad on me. And but, stretching yeah. cold really isn't really going to do much anyways. You want to roll like before training, roll out, massage gun. Yeah. Um, and then dynamic stretching. So move stretch, stretching with movement, you okay. know, warming the muscles up as you're stretching. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, then stretching, stretching comes in when you're warm and like after train after, and you can roll That's out after do. too, yeah. but yoga, there's a, there's a yoga that we do. If you ever want to come check it out in my gym on Very Saturdays cool. okay. called Raja yoga Okay. and it's all restorative. It's like yin, but it's uh, a little bit different, more meditative but you're holding postures for a really long time and they're all on the mat okay. and they suck and it's, it, it's horrible. <laughs> you're not making this sound good. No, but <laughs> no, it's, I, get I feel so good after it's like yeah. an hour and a half. We turn the heat up a little bit. It's not like yeah. hot yoga, but it's just warm in there. Yeah. And, um, it's amazing. Come try yeah. it. It's we awesome. started we probably, maybe it was about a six month period at my gym. We started doing yoga before our Saturday open mat. Mm hmm. And I love that because yeah. I was getting that stretch in, and then I was like, once I got good. out, I was, like, yeah. I was so relaxed. Less but I was injuries also, yeah, I was, happen, yeah. yes. But I do, um, uh, where I, I've just moved post divorce, um, I got a three bedroom so that I put mat, I have one room that's just mats. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so now, but I don't get in there enough before, like, I don't stop work long enough to, like, I, I, massage gun is like the most important thing to me. I feel like I get most of the alleys yeah. out like sure. the pain and then if i have time i've got like the foam rollers the so right so right i've awful. got the uh real oh you don't like this oh god we i love this all right yeah, no. oh. it's really dangerous the chirp wheel i have all three chirp good. wheels yeah. i love those so like if i get in there and i've got an, in an inversion table yeah. so like i've got all that stuff awesome. i definitely don't use them enough but i i know again for somebody like me i i had somebody on uh, uh paul geller uh, he's an attorney. He's a black belt, uh, an ATT oh, black yeah, belt. Yeah. Paul Geller. Yep. Is uh, he with Pompano? Can he, Pompano? Uh, so he's been training it. Yes. yes. So he's the one that brought it up to me. And he's like, I just, I started training. I think he still trains at ATT or he still, maybe he still trains his old gym. But he's, he's like, I started taking classes at 10th Planet. He's like, I've got to understand this other side. And he's, so he, was he like, also lives in Vail. I think that he, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. He came and, yeah. He okay, came up yeah. and visited me yeah. before he went back to Vail. Okay. And bought so some gear. He, um, he came on after the whole, that the lawsuit with this kid that won 40, not kid, but the, the man that won mm -hmm. like uh, the 46 the million. Crazy thing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Henner million. thing like blew it, like yeah. it was like 46, right? Yeah. The Henner thing blew it up. And he and I don't remember how, I think he sent, like, we wound up communicating via email. And he was interested in coming in and talking about it. And I was just like, this perfect time. Like, yeah, let's talk about this. Is That sounded great. I had an opening week, had him come on. So so I met him and then he, um, yeah, he's he met Seth Planet. Up. So I've, yeah. I've had it in my mind. I'm like, I, I, I like, I love my gym and I will always be at my gym. But I feel like at this level, like, I'm not worried about like that. Uh, what do they call the uh, crayonch like yeah. traveling to another gym and trying it so he's got it in my head to like i'm like 10th plan is probably like the per you know so, the perfect the thing that i'm missing yes, you know like that for, for yes. my jiu-jitsu and you can bring it back so, to your uh, gym and yeah. show them it's like yeah so saturdays we have an all levels class i teach at 12 and then the yoga is at 1 30 so you could okay. get a little bit mm -hmm. of 10th planet jujitsu and I, then some yoga you know one of the reasons that like we brought the podcast back we were filming in miami i live in coral springs so i'm okay. i'm like a half hour so I was like wanted to get back into our community. We were part of my school was part of fight sports before all the craziness in fight sports happened. So when we moved down to Miami, we were like, yeah, we're going to get into the belly of the beast in our school. And then all that craziness happened. And it was just like, yeah, step back. my school stepped away from fight sports. So then it was just like, well, it's kind of hard to have those people. Like it was we had Wagner on and then two weeks later, all that craziness ah. came out. So then it was just like, mm, we're down here because I, I was, okay, we're closer to Fight Sports yeah. HQ and and all, all, you know, just that group of pros. Like, great, we can get all these guys on the show. So I'm happy to be back up here because now everybody, like, I'm trying to bring in as many locals as possible. Oh, yeah. 
and just kind of develop those relationships. And I would like to travel. There's a selfish yeah. reason too. I would like to, you know, to oh, try out it. some of the other gyms. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I take you up a, on that. Once a week, I teach a, a black belt from ATT. Um, we we been doing truck stuff. Yeah, yeah, he wants to learn. He wants yeah. to learn ten plan stuff. So he's yeah. paying me privates. Yeah, that's you awesome. know, so very cool. Yeah, I think um, I think people are starting to understand that, like, yeah, like they need to learn it too. And yeah, I mean, it's all obviously B Max got so much stuff out there. I love um, stuff. And Eddie's, you can get all Eddie's content for five dollars a month. Yeah, it's, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, mastering the system is five dollars a month. Oh wow! You have access to all the past stuff, all the new stuff he's putting on. I mean, it's insane yeah. the amount of stuff you can get out there yeah. that's I'll, free, that's also cheap. That's maybe like, like once every two months, I go back to, he's got like the lockdown, like he's got, there's a, uh, there's a lockdown video that he has that I, I always too. go back to. Yeah, I'll go back to it. And just like he shows like the lockdown to the sweep, right? Mm. Like uh, old school sweep. Um, yeah, like the old school, like uh, I think it's, he does it with Grabs the leg. The like he's grab, well, he's grab, no, the, I think he's grabbing the leg, he's got the leg. Oh, you're talking about electric electric sweep? Uh, yeah, electric, okay, yeah, like yeah the, electric chair. The electric okay. chair sweep. So yeah, yeah I, I, as, as soon as I get the leg, I guess I've always just called it the banana split. I don't know that I've called the sweep anything. So my my coach calls it the pee-pee splitter. I call it the banana split because in wrestling, they kind of call that the pee-pee. 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 The, the, the little guy splitter. Got it. Uh, so <laughs> again, that's like that. Those are the names that, that we come up with. So anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on that. I've been we my Please, I've been talking yeah. to some of my training partners about like like we we're it's okay to travel. Like that whole yeah. crayonch thing isn't so bad when you're at a little bit of a higher level. And we even talked about it on the last show when I had my training partners. I'm like, it's okay to go to open mats. Don't feel weird, um, but tell your coach. Yeah. Like, you don't want him to see you on Instagram at another school and go, like, it, did he quit my school? Like, you know, yeah. hey, I'm going to travel. I'm just doing this for this, but I'm not going anywhere, coach. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, once you get to a little bit high, especially if you're traveling, you know, it's okay. Like, yeah. you're not going to, you know, you I think, I think those days are kind of gone a little bit. I hope so, because I know. think cross-training is, is amazing for everybody. Yeah. I think okay. it's, um yeah, I think everybody needs to cross-train and and learn and, and train with other people and get new looks and stuff like that. Sure. Cause you're going to learn the same stuff and you're yeah. going to go into your guy. He knows your game. And and I, blah, love, blah, like, blah. When, I love when I get that little, the, one of the reasons like I love watching like BMAC videos and, and like I love Jason Scully videos. Like I like to get the step. Oh my God. When the foot is there, yes. go, Oh God, it BMAC's changes everything. So like, good. His yeah. just hip out just here. And it like opens the whole thing up. He's a wonderful yeah. coach. And yeah. yeah, the way that he explains it is really good. We've had him on, we've had him on once and we had plans to bring him on again. And then he's just kind of blown up with the commentating and he's mm -hmm. just like, tries, yeah. he's never around. So I feel like when I ask, like he always says yes, but it's right. always like, we got to find the right time. I'd uh, love to get him I would him love to have him in, but I, I know like he's constantly traveling. Oh my God, if he have him come in, I'd yeah, love to. Yeah, I'll let you know. I've never met him face to face. We did the, we did it by Zoom yeah. uh, when we did it. Okay, so uh, we're going to wrap okay. things up, but we're going to do the... The drill down. Found a sound effects guy. <laughs> So I, so these are like the most common questions that we ask. And some of these I'm going to like kind of glaze over because it's just like, well, you're 10th planet. So you don't do any gear. Like, so the first question is preference, gear or no gear? Oh, no gear. No gear. Uh, take down or pull guard? Take down. Okay. Music during we, We'll oh. say on our team, we will not kick you off the team for pulling guard, but we will think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a guard. I'm a, I'm a guard puller. Okay. Um, a, I, again, I won't hold it against you. We've a lot of it. We talked about it a lot. It's like um, I've been the bigger guy in my training room for so long mm -hmm. that I almost you feel to learn bad yeah. taking people down because it's just like ah, I'm already right. scary to roll with for sure. uh, either a woman or somebody that's under 200 pounds. And they're like, oh, God, this guy's going to take me down. And like, yeah, it's scary it. for them. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take him down and uh, and or I'm going to pull guard. It's and much better, too, with the gi. Like you work. can hold somebody yeah. like, to, yeah, you know, that is also true. It's, yeah. it's this definitely different if totally I, different. when i do with no gi that's usually we're going to stay on our feet a little bit longer until somebody takes down and I'll, just like our no gi classes usually has a little bit more room sure. our gi classes are really full and like if i'm going to take somebody down we're hitting we're nice. going to hit we're on somebody so i just kind of like started to do it but i'm also like not looking i'm not looking to be a professional like fighter or sure. like so it's like also i'm there for me and then i'm you know i know also know i'm like i don't want to hurt somebody and i also don't want to get hurt and that's usually when those you get Take those downs, scrambles, yes, right? Yes. You get people get hurt. I get it. Um, music during rolling. Yes, always. Always. Um, What's I, your go-to? You know, it's it's either EDM or hip hop. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, who to Ray said uh, Ray, one of our my trading partners. I was surprised because he's such like a like a hard rock, like metal guy. Yeah. And he was he said ED, ED, EDM. EDM. Yeah. He was just that, that shocked me. He's like I'm like do you listen to on the car? He's like no, but he's like I love it when I'm rolling. Yeah. Um, so when you're not on the mat, mm-hmm. are you somebody that watches a lot of jujitsu? Are you watching videos, the matches, the WNOs, the, the UFCs? Are you watching Always. everything? Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, I definitely, as much as, can. as much as I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, this, since I've been here, I just feel like I have shadow I don't... boxing in front of the TV when there's a UFC on. I'm like, come on, you know, come on. I'm not so bad no? about that. No, right. <laughs> I actually, I, I get, I really get, in, get into it and I'm, I'm, I'm usually talking and yeah. yelling it. Usually I'm, I'm honestly, I'm usually saying shit about the commentators cause yeah. they just piss me off some of really? the time. Yeah. You know, I don't I, know. Like, you know, I'm John Jones and I have been friends since back, 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 okay. back then. So DC just drives me crazy. Really? Really? Yes. <laughs> His jujitsu knowledge is just yeah. sucks. Yeah, it's like, he just says, yeah, yeah it just yeah. pisses me off. And then yeah. I'm not a big Dominic Cruz fan. Um, so he I, pisses you know, me off. I, I never liked Dominic Cruz as a fighter. I didn't like the talking. I didn't like, he, no. he would like, he, I guess like his, his mindset had to be like, I have to hate you to fight you. So like, he would like, where are you? Why are you like fighting with this? Like you're making up these, like, Dumb. you know, this story, yeah. not even a story. It was just like, I hate you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to, you know, like <laughs> it just went so over the top, but it was like, not even cause something really happened, yeah. Yeah. you know? But I do think he's an awesome commentator. Uh, I don't think so. I think that I, I have to give I um that's happened with uh God, uh there's there's a couple of times that that's happened with like boxing. Um I forget and there's a showtime, I forget his name. There's a showtime uh, boxing commentator. I think he got like me too and he like I don't think he's he's on the air. He said something I don't even think it was me too, excuse me. It was like he said something like racist and they took him off air. But like horrible I hated hit the personality. Yeah. But then they were like this awesome commentator. I'm like, oh, this like talented. Sure. Um, uh, who does submission underground? Um, Chael. Chael. Yeah, Chael. Yeah. Chael. Same thing. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> this man. You like the manufactured craziness around. Like he's sure. still like, I'm the number one. Gra- I'm the number one martial artist in the yeah. world. Like after he just gets beat. Yeah. But he's an awesome commentator, and I do like to watch his stuff. Like yeah. I put his stuff on. Like I'll find his channel and just watch his videos. Yeah, he's, where he's got like those com- Like he does like a maybe 15, 20 minute video about a subject or his show. Uh, so yeah, so there's been times that I found somebody. I'm like, Ugh. some people. But I, I do get DC. I like DC, but I do get the the commentating right. side is a little bit more. And he starts arguing with the other guy sometimes, and he just, it's like he gets off subject, they start talking about random shit, I feel like he's stoned or something, and he's just like going off <laughs> somebody, on some tangent. Somebody I'm called like, him out for eating. get back to the de- freaking fight. I think somebody called him out for eating cake during their fight oh, the other day. Oh, man. <laughs> he was like eating, See? the fight is going on, he's See eating cake. See what I'm saying? Like, take it serious. Sick so, serious. So, okay, we know who you don't like, yeah. who are your favorite uh Favorite. MMA fighters to watch or or jujitsu either, um, either or yeah I, obviously I just said John John Jones obviously is um is the goat I think he's yeah. just phenomenal I uh, can't wait for this fight coming up yeah what do you think about this with uh, he's with got, he's got it yeah. but I, I I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a good fight yeah I don't think that um John's gonna end it quickly I think Stipe is very very strong and tough mm-hmm. and um and it's not gonna be it's not gonna be an easy fight yeah. but John's gonna come out on top for sure I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I I really, in terms of uh, jujitsu, like uh, Fion is uh, amazing. I love her personality. Yeah. She's really great. Um, uh, there's a, a a girl from uh, Tenth Planet Austin named Lauren Sears. She's a okay. she's a brown belt. Uh, I got to meet her a little bit in Austin a couple about a month ago when I was out there, and I just love her tenacity and uh, her style. She's very Tenth Planety. Does a lot of like. Yeah. Um, rubber guard stuff and um, and like her story is just really cool too. So I really like following her and um, and seeing what she's she's going to be a, a Tempe uh, moonhead as well one okay. day. So that's right. cool. That's nice. Cool to watch. Um, and she's up on the scene. Let's see who else. Men wise, jujitsu. I mean, you know, Craig Jones is is one of my favorites to watch it's for jujitsu, but just because he's funny, like yeah. he's hilarious. To Have me. you seen his videos over the last couple of days about flow grappling? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I reposted one of those because I like I, I I love his stuff. I was surprised that 
like he's that vocal, but I guess like there comes a point where you're that big that you can do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> like a smaller somebody with not as big a name would do that and probably like get kicked off a card or right. not be, not be you know. You got, welcome I back. love that. You know, I love that you got to be able to speak your your feelings and like you have the yeah. the playing field to do so and the voice like do it. I'm, and, I'm and all And there's about places it. now because like right, you mean you got fights best. Fight pass, you got flow grappling. Mm -hmm. um, there's just there's other, there are other places to be where you're not like so married to or tied to one right. organization. Um, absolutely, you know. But and he's fun. He's, yeah, he's a, hilarious. He's a fun follow. Yeah, man. he's an absolutely fun follow. Yeah, yeah he's you see great. all the sumo stuff the other day too. He, I didn't they, they, see the sumo. Yeah, stuff. I guess when they did uh, what was this? Uh, this the last fight they went to was the team fight. Um, the yeah uh, quintet one. The yeah. quintet. Mm -hmm. I guess they stayed over there and they did some like oh uh, they some, did they did, they did some shoots oh with, with like Nikki Nikki Rod and and him got they're in the oh in goodness. the gear you know they're in that oh, what, I don't know what I you call that it. and they're uh, awesome. yeah they did some some sumo stuff and it was kind of awesome. funny I think he wound up like doing like a jujitsu move on one of the guys and like tag got him to tap out it was oh fun. my god yeah, it's funny. on the sumo guy yeah on the oh, sumo wow. guy like they did oh, you know it looked like it was it was you know like set up but Hilarious. it was yeah it was funny that's cool uh ultimate goal in the world of jujitsu or in real and mma what, what what do you want your like legacy to be like so you know when i was fighting obviously i wanted to become a ufc champion okay. and didn't didn't happen this uh, lifetime but maybe okay. next um, as far as jujitsu goes, you know, I am going to come back and compete again. I'm, I'm working out, starting to train again. And, um, I'd like to, to get in a Medusa fight, okay. like a super fight and, okay. and just fucking uh, maybe combat jujitsu. Would you but do, would not like the IBJJF scene? Like I've, you're not. I've thought like, about it. So we do yeah. like this, uh, December, we're all going to worlds and okay. we're competing under one 10th planet name. Oh, okay. So we are coming to take over. Wow. So we yeah. are ready. Uh, world because 10p is coming on december to worlds in vegas um but yeah so i would like maybe like so not that's too soon for me because i still haven't even like got hit the hit the road sure. cut, so to speak but maybe next year i could be you know that could be something like um a black belt worlds ibjgf yeah maybe but really more thinking um for like pro pro matches and like a medusa like a big stage i I think it would be so cool. Had you done that before or it Not was right into MMA? It was right straight into MMA. MMA. I've done a few then, tournaments, okay. but small tournaments. Yeah. I've never done any pro matches. And um, I think the first one I'm going to do is like a high rollers match. Okay. Um, I'm friends with Lonnie, the owner, and I've been thinking about like who I want to ask. And I want it to be someone like UFC or, yeah. or MMA. Um, like a bigger, a bigger name. Bigger name. Yeah. It doesn't have to be retired necessarily. Like I was thinking, actually, Angela Hill from my my show okay. because Tisha fought her last year, and I cornered Tisha. I caught, I like okay. helped Tisha for her um, jujitsu that camp, and then I saw Angela and like we're we're cool, you yeah. know. We're like so. Um, I think that would be cool. Yeah. But also, I'm like, damn, like, do I maybe retired? Maybe retired. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. You know, you could go either just way. because. But she's I don't a, know. She's fun to I actually uh, talking about commentators. I've enjoyed like I don't she's know funny. if she's still doing. Uh, I I don't, can't remember seeing her recently, but I do like her take on it. And <laughs> she does her homework. She does, yeah. you know, and she 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 follows the sport and and really pays attention. So I have to say, like, um, you know, the stuff that I've seen her do too is um, yeah. Is, it's okay. it's good, yeah. But uh, so our very last question okay. is usually we like call it our biggest question, but you don't do gay, so we're usually asking everybody if they wash their belts, and it's always like fifty fifty. Like I don't, I never wash my belt. Okay. Like blood of my my uh, yeah my the, opponent my yeah. opponent is on the on my like you. How could you oh wash off their blood and sweat? I'm a belt washer, so I've always you know. I but, would uh, be a belt washer. I would, I would uh, be. Okay, yes. there you go. Okay, that, good enough. We got team wash your belt. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right. So I'll give you, uh, I got some shirts. I got some stuff for you. We always cool. have some podcast stuff, but, uh, do you want anybody you want to shout out? Let, well, let everybody know, obviously the Instagram, um, your location, if you want to give out your address yep. and anybody you're working with, anybody you want to shout cool. out, this is your time. All right. Right uh, there. That, the camera with the camera light. Right? Yeah, that's okay. you. Um, so if you guys want to come check out my gym, it is 10th planet Boca Raton. It's in, uh, Boca Raton and that's uh, 170, uh, Yamato road. If you just Google 10th Planet Boca, you're going to find it. Um, I have my website up there. You're going to find our um, classes. We got classes, you know, 
midday, evening, weekends, all okay. that. We have takedowns and we got jujitsu. We got the Tempe warm up flows jujitsu, combat jujitsu. Just hired Ian Heinish from the UFC teaching combat jujitsu. We got five black belts on staff. We got leg lock classes. I got a D Division One wrestling coach. Oh, wow. Um, he was a Division One wrestler. He's one of our coaches. Um, so, you know, top, top, top quality coaches. Um, you can find us on Instagram at 10th Planet Boca Raton. You can find uh, me at Heather Joe Clark, Heather J O Clark um, for Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. Um, I just want to say shout out to my team, you know, to my my team uh, that that shows up every day, allows me to to get on the mats and show them what I love and what I'm passionate about and to teach my magic because believe me, like, this is my magic to give back yeah. to the world. And, and I believe that it's more than just jujitsu, right? It's about like learning how to be a person on and off the mats. And like, it's every day I do like a quote of the day after, after class okay. cool. and I like correlate how that quote is in the world, but also how it correlates to, to being on the mat gotcha. and how they're just all one, like yeah. how you are on the mat is how you are in real life. It's, you know, I'll end with this is a quote that I always use is, how you do anything is how you do everything. There you go. Good way to end it. Thank you to Feito IT and AV, specializing in commercial and residential automation, security cameras, CCTV, POS, and more. Check them out at feitoitav.com or call 305-428-2515 and let them know the dummy sent you. Special thank you to the crew over at Flow & Roll for all their support. Flow and Roll is renowned for their incredible Nogi rash guards, shorts, and leggings. Flow and Roll has quickly become the premier custom apparel provider for academies big and small throughout the United States. Reach out today to discuss your custom order and ask about their incredible pre-order program. You can send an email to flowenroll at gmail.com or visit their Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll and shoot them a direct message. And yes, they can create an awesome custom gi for your academy as well. Visit flowandroll.com to check out their awesome designs, and while you're there, pick up a Jiu-Jitsu Dummy Signature Tee exclusively at flowandroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your purchase of T-shirts, rash guards, or geese with code JJD. So I got some stuff for you. Oh. So let's. Uh, so first, we get you uh, our Jiu-Jitsu Dummies right. mug. I'm also going to give you, we have a Black Belt Digital Marketing mug. Sweet. Let me put this back in here. Thank I also you. got a little, uh, we got a little rubber, rubber, rubber keychain. Put okay. it in here. All right. I'll put it in here. Let me wrap it up again. Um, also, I just got, so Flow and Roll, I, we do have like our t-shirts on our website, okay. but Flow and Roll does does a, a shirt and, and does it for us. What, what size are you? These are men's, like a, I'd a say medium. Shirt. Medium. Here mm -hmm. you go. So we've got our shirt. And then we got the Flow and Roll logo on the back. Thank you. So there you go. Um, I'm going to wrap. Oh, Bo, I got one for you. Bo, you're a medium, right? I got to take out a medium for you. I gave Ben a shirt already before. Uh, you blew up a little bit? I got to get you one out of the box, so we'll get it for you before the end. But let, thank you so much for doing this. Thank I appreciate you, you coming on. Um, definitely going to pay you a visit in the near future. Yes. And if you ever want to come back or anything's going on or maybe uh, after the world's in December yeah. or, or your super fight, come I'll back and talk to us fight. again, okay? okay. Yeah, hell so yeah. thank you for doing this. Thank uh, you, we love to say uh, uh, check us out at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies. Uh, for all the ways to watch, listen, and support, my uh, personal Instagram is Uncle Milty BJJ, and uh, that's about it. Uh, Bo, you want to give out your handy wisdom? Yeah, handy underscore wisdom. You can say handy that. underscore wisdom yeah. on IG. Check him out. He does these little like uh, these videos with his hand. It's kind of really funny. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy. But uh, thank you, uh, Ben, for uh, for producing for us today. Of course, of we, course. We'd love to have you back too, Ben. All right, you all can, right, cool. You come back whenever you like. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but uh, thank you for watching and listening, everybody. Peace, love, jujitsu. Thank you. All right,